Good afternoon and welcome to Dick Price Stadium in beautiful Norfolk, Virginia for today's broadcast on the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Today's game features the Spartans of Norfolk State and the Bulldogs of South Carolina State. Hello everyone, I am Ross Gordon and I'm joined by Wu Bay Gabre for today's matchup. It's a big one as it all comes down to this for an opportunity to share the MEAC Conference Championship or to outright win it, South Carolina State with that opportunity. Norfolk State with the win today has the opportunity to share the MEAC Championship Trophy. It's a lot going on here today as we look at the standings coming into today's ball game. North Carolina a t sits above the standings at 5-2 and two, along with South Carolina State. They're both 5-2. and two. Norfolk State and Bethune-Cookman followed them right behind them at 4-3. and three. So many scenarios came out to this week about the conference championship. If North Carolina a t wins today against their in-state rival, North Carolina Central, they will be the MEAC's representative in the Celebration Bowl. The only way anyone other than North Carolina a t can make it to the Celebration Bowl is if South Carolina State wins today over Norfolk State and North Carolina a t loses at North Carolina Central. There could be a possible four-way tie for the MEAC crown even still North Carolina a t will be the representative for the celebration bowls Florida a m down the bottom there is seven and zero, but they are ineligible for MEAC championship or postseason when we come back we will set you up for today's ball game we'll bring in Wu Baker Bray as Norfolk State gets set to take on the Bulldogs of South Carolina State on the MEAC digital network Dickies Ben Stadium this December for more information, visit thecelebrationbowl.com. We are back live here from Dick Price Stadium as Norfolk State and South Carolina State get set to do battle on Senior Day here in Norfolk, Virginia. Savage, Aaron Savage, Bobby Price, Nigel Chavis, and... Also, Juwan Carter will be the captains today for Norfolk State. Three of the four are seniors today as we get set for today's matchup. It's a matchup between two coaches who have been in the league for a while here as the way things go. On the Norfolk State sideline, you see him there. That's the head coach in his fifth season, Coach Latrell Scott out of Hampton. He's 21-34 and 34 here at Norfolk State University, 46-43. and 43. Overall, on the visitor sideline, Buddy Pugh. Buddy Pugh at his alma mater has been the head coach at South Carolina State now for 17 years, 127 and 72 as the head coach of the Bulldogs. On today's game of Wu Bay, it's going to be a, a game where we'll see a lot of talented athletes, especially on the on the offensive side of the football. You have one of the best wide receivers in the conference on on both sides the way they're playing on the south carolina state sideline burrows one of the best uh, wide receivers in the conference this to this point leads the league in touchdown receptions he has 808 yards on the, the year on 40 receptions and 13 touchdowns absolutely 13 touchdowns he's their top target on offense uh, for the red shirt freshman corey fields at quarterback who's thrown, thrown 15 touchdowns uh, and pass for over 13 yards raw. So you're right, that offensive side of the ball for South Carolina State is going to be tough to stop today. And on the other side, he'll be matched up against one of the better linebackers in the conference. The second leading tackler in the conference is Nigel Chavis. Nigel is the four-year starter for the Spartans who will receive to start this uh, ball game and will be moving from left to right on the uh, television screen here this afternoon. Nigel has been the most, uh, probably the most consistent player the Spartans has had on the defensive side. Leads the team in tackles again, second in the conference, going into this final ball game around three tackles behind the leader. And again, his last ball game here as a Spartan, and you know he wants to play well. Absolutely, Ross, the senior from Richmond, uh, wants to play well. Um, you know, coming into this game, you know, like you talked about the scenarios earlier, you know, and off off the camera, uh, off air as well you know there's so many scenarios here for these seniors and you want savage and all the other seniors to go out on, on a good note Juwan carter the quarterback for norfolk state leads his team in passing here to this year 23 which is a career high for him only eight interceptions and a lot of those came early to give you some sort of statistical comparison between the two quarterbacks or the three quarterbacks that will play today uh, 22 22 touchdowns passings for 
South Carolina State between Corey Fields and Tyrese Nick. Juwan Carter has 23 of the 24 touchdown passes this year for the Spartans. Yeah, and, and you also can't forget about LeBron Morris uh, at running back. He's third in rushing. The senior running back is third in rushing. So they have, you know, Fields, Demontre Burrows, and Morris. Again, on that offensive side of the ball, a tough task for the Spartans defense to handle. And the Spartans will get the football first to start uh, this afternoon's ball game. We will see Kevin Johnson back deep along with Talbert as um, South Carolina State's Dylan Bre Bredesen will kick it away. Bredesen will put toe to leather and we're underway and Johnson will take it. Actually, he'll drop it at the 10 and he gets tripped up at the 20 yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive. Got a fortunate bounce to bounce back into his bread basket at the 20. And it will be a first and 10 for the Spartans at their own 21. Yeah, Johnson looking looking, looking downfield. Wanted to make a play. Just lost, kept it, lost focus and kept his, uh, lost his focus and eyes off the ball. But luckily for him, he recovered it. We'll see Jawan Carter for the first time. Again, coming into today's ball game. Second in the conference in passing. Yards per game, 2,604 yards for the junior out of Richmond, Virginia. He'll come out for the first time offensively, and the Spartans will have three wideouts in this formation. Carter will hand it off to the senior. That's Gerald Hewlett. He bounces around the outside, gets to the 30, and it looks like he'll have enough for the first down. A good first play by the Spartans. Hewlett, the senior. That time taking a big hit going out of bounds, but he gets enough yardage for the first down. Check that. He'll be about a yard shy of the first down. And Hewlett, who's run well over the last few weeks, gives the Spartans a pickup of nine on first down. And Carter will be right back to the line of scrimmage for the Spartans with two tight ends and two wide receivers. As Carter drops back the pass, pass is going to be complete to Justin Smith. They give him credit enough for the 31. It's enough for the first down before he stopped. On the tackle for South Carolina State was Zafir Kelly. That time again, a great route by Smith coming back to his quarterback. That's good enough. That's good enough. You know, he got enough of the first down in that reception. So the Spartans will have a first down in 10. As South Carolina State shows blitz, now the Spartans will check out of their play. We'll see... Hewlett in the backfield as Carter will hand it to Hewlett. Hewlett spins his way back to the line of scrimmage. Might have gotten one on the play. It'll be a second down and nine for Norfolk State as the Spartans quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Hewlett to the right of Carter as a Carter. Play action, Carter looking downfield, looking for Justin Smith. He got hit as soon as he releases the football on the pressure quickly was Xavier Johnson, the 6'1", 240-pound redshirt sophomore. He got in on Carter quickly, and it will bring up a third down and nine. Yeah, that pressure on Carter, not able to get the pass off when he would like, and he was knocked down, and the ball sailed out of bounds. It was a fake pitch to Hewlett as... We'll see Savage in the backfield as the Spartans go four wide. McFarland, the tight end, lined up closest to the line of scrimmage along with the Kendall James and Ellington as Carter drops back to pass with time, looking out to the right, throws it short of Justin Smith, and the Spartans will have to punt. Yeah, that time a little miscommunication between Smith and Carter. Balls. Take a one, takes a one hopper and goes out of bounds. Fourth down, punting situation for the Spartans. We'll see the Spartans punting unit out for the first time today. And Ryan Richter will stand at his own 17-yard line to get it away. Richter gets it away. Just barely does as the ball takes a South Carolina State bounce as it hits at the 41 and will be touched dead at the 43. And we'll see. The South Carolina State offense on the field for the first time. Again, Ross, you got Corey Fields, a redshirt freshman, 15 touchdowns. You know, DeMontre Barrows, 13 touchdowns. And LeBron Morris, the senior, third in rushing on the South Carolina State offense. A big offensive line for Coach Buddy Pugh. 
and the South Carolina State offense as we see Corey Fields on the field first pistol look Morris in the backfield as the handoff goes to Morris he's patient behind the line of scrimmage and the Spartans do a good job of crowding that line of scrimmage no game there as we see Nyree Quinterly up along the line of scrimmage to make the stop along with uh, Bobby Price the sophomore the senior leaders in the back end of the defense for Norfolk State come up to the line of scrimmage to make the stop quickly fields back into the shotgun quick drop pass is going to be incomplete thrown for Demontres Barrows Barrows had it in his hands the Spartans were on him quickly but it falls to the turf As Norfolk State changes up things along the line of scrimmage, three wide receivers to the far side, one to the actually to the near side, one to the far side as Fields drops back to pass. Pass is going to be incomplete, thrown in the direction of Shaquan Davis, the redshirt freshman wide receiver, 6'5", 201 pounds, and it's out of bounds and thrown out of bounds, and we'll see the bunting unit on to the field for South Carolina State. So both defenses handle their business on their first drive, and we'll see the punting unit for the Bulldogs. That time, Givers Wilson bust through the line, got some pressure on Fields, and he had to throw it away. Justin Fields, excuse me, Justin Smith, back to return the Cliff Benjamin punt for South Carolina State. As the snap is good, it's away, and Smith will return it from the 21. Tries to get it outside, does get outside, past the 30. Now with the 40, gets a little bit of a block, gets taken down inside of South Carolina State territory at the 48-yard line. That's his first real return on the year. And what a return for Justin Smith as the Spartans in business at the South Carolina State 48 to start their second drive of the day. We'll take a timeout. We'll take this break as there's no score here at Dick Price Stadium on the MEAC Digital Network. First and 10 for the Green and Gold. With us. Now buy a Samsung Galaxy S10 or Note 10 and get one free. Twelve twenty-three here. Left to go in the first quarter from Dick Price Stadium. No scores. The Spartans will start their second drive. In South Carolina State Territory as Carter comes out in the shotgun. Three wide outs as a handoff. Goes to Aaron Savage. Not much doing there for Savage as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Not much more there as B.J. Davis, the Sam linebacker, leads the charge for the Bulldogs' defense. It's good to see the seniors playing on senior day with Hewlett and, um, and Savage in there. All right, it's Carter back to the line of scrimmage. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. As Carter drops back to pass. Double move as he looks downfield. Had a man as he's going to back up now inside his own territory and get sacked at the 45-yard line. And Nowhere to go. Number 98. Carter was looking for McElhaney on a double move. He had McElhaney had beaten his man momentarily, Zafir Kelly. But it looked like Carter didn't like what he saw and held on to it. And it'll bring you a third down now. And 16 for the Spartans. Well, better that than him forcing a throw down the field for the Spartans. As James will move in motion for Norfolk State to the far side of the field. Savage in the backfield. South Carolina State shows blitz, brings it. Carter hitting the backfield, escapes the traffic, gets it out to Ellington. Ellington will have it back at the around the 49, but that will bring up a fourth down situation as well as Ellington. Had to fall to the ground to make the reception. We'll see the punting unit out on the field again for the Spartans. That time, the Bulldogs again putting more pressure on Carter, making him uncomfortable in the pocket. You saw the last couple of plays, he had to move around a little bit. And the last couple of throws, well, the last couple of opportunities weren't, weren't available to him to go down the field. Scott Robinson Jr. gets set to return the punt for Ryan Richter. Richter will get this one away, and this one is a beauty. And... Zach Denton, the long snapper, is going to get flagged for a 
personal foul, kick catching interference. There and it, the ball stopped inside the five, which was tough. There, if Denton would look for the football, he might have had an opportunity to down the ball inside the five. We'll get the call. It will be a timeout on the field. They call kick catching interference, and the Spartans will be on the field in a few moments when we come back from this timeout. On defense as the Spartans and Bulldogs nodded up at zero right here on the MEAC Digital Network. Look at me. We're back at Dick Price Stadium with 10-24 left to go in the first quarter. No score. South Carolina State with their second offensive possession is Morris in the backfield. He'll play action. Pass is going to be complete over the middle of the field into the hands of Shaquan Davis taken down by Devin Coles as a quick slant there and he gets out to the 45 yard line big pick up there for the Bulldogs as that's the first completion of the day for South Carolina State as they have a first down now at their own 45 Fields now in motion as Tyrese Nick moves to the quarterback spot. Nick will keep it, runs right, and right there is Nari Quinnerly, and Quinnerly will make the stop in the backfield. The Spartans weren't fooled at all on that misdirection play by South Carolina State. No, they weren't fooled at all. It was good pursuit by Quinnerly and Chavis to close that gap and get the tackle in the backfield. Nick will go to the sideline after the loss of four. On the play back to the 41 yard line. As Fields again will have a flag thrown and it's going to go against Norfolk State. And so the four yards that they lost on first down, they will get those five yards back and it'll be a second down and nine for the Bulldogs. Chris Myers, the guilty party, he's second in the conference in sacks with eight on the year as Nick comes back out onto the field offensively at the wide out position there will be four out there now for the Bulldogs two to either side Morris is the tailback as Nick comes in motion it's going to be a keeper by Nick and he'll be slammed down and Nigel Chavis right there on the play, so the five yards they got back off the penalty, they lose six. Back and forth we go, and it'll be a third down now in 15 for the Bulldogs. That was great discipline that time by Chavis to stay in his lane. Saw the play develop, gets the huge tackle. Brings up a third and long now. So the Spartans have forced a third down in 15. As Fields lines up in the shotgun, the Spartans showing blitz again now as South Carolina State looks to the sideline. It's Fields, we'll drop back. He's looking double move, looking down the field. Pass is going to be thrown and incomplete. Nice job by Devin Coles coming up and getting a hand on the football that was in the hands of Shaquan Davis. A 6'5 receiver went up for it. Couldn't bring it down. It will bring up a fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. So Davis had both hands on that ball. Coles knocks it out. The freshman from Holland Springs breaks up a huge opportunity for the Bulldogs. Great defensive play by Coles. And for the second time today, we'll see Cliff Benjamin. And we'll also see Smith again staying inside the 20 at his 19-yard line to return the punt. As Smith will call a fair catch at the 23-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start this drive. After this timeout, no score, 7.55 left to go here in the first quarter. We'll take a break on the MEAC Digital Network. We're back at Dick Bryce Stadium as there's no score. With 7.55 left to go in the quarter, the Spartans will have the football. Three wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Kevin Johnson 
The freshman tailback in the backfield as Carter drops back to pass. It's going to be a quick screen into the hands of DK James. James eludes one tackler, stays on his feet, bounces it outside, and it's a foot race as James gets to the 45-yard line before he's pushed out of bounds. Slow developing play. James that time just uses speed to elude some defenders and gets a huge pickup for the Spartans on first down. Bounce off the chest of Tyrell Goodwin. It'll be a first down for the Spartans. That's their biggest game of the afternoon. And it will be pushed out to the 44-yard line. It's a 21-yard pickup for DeKendall James as the Spartans hand it off to Kevin Johnson. And Johnson's tripped up in the backfield. Nice job there coming off the edge by Chris Simmons. And it's a loss of about two on the play. It'll be second down and 12. Yeah, we saw the senior running backs. Now we have a... Opportunity to see the freshman Johnson in there running a sweep. Just couldn't get around the corner. As Johnson stays in there, second down and 12. Two wide outs to the far side of the field. Johnson, the, t the tailback lined up to the right of Carter as Carter drops back to pass. With time, looking downfield, has a wide open to Kendall James. Just led him to tab it too far. As pressure again was coming in the face of Juwan Carter. And yeah, and Ross, you're right, and that's why the pass was... A little too far. He tried to try to get tried to lead his, his receiver, but had to throw it a little too early. Again, we see a lot of zone from the South Carolina State defense, and the safety was a step behind James there on the on the out route, but the pass was just a tad bit too far in front as the Spartans again in third down and long. Carter drops back to pass with time, steps up in the pocket, looking for room to run, and he has it. He should have the first down. He will have it, and he takes a, a slide inside of South Carolina State Territory at the 43-yard line. It'll be a first for the Spartans. Just giving, get, taking what the defense gives you, Ross. That time he had an open lane. Like you said before, that zone defense by South Carolina State, open gaps. Carter takes advantage of it, gets a first down. Savage will check back onto the backfield for, South, for Norfolk State. Uh, the Spartans have a first down and 10 at the South Carolina State 43-yard line. Anthony Williams lined up as the H-back right behind the tight end as Savage will get the handoff. Running right side, Savage with a big hole, steps out of one tackle, gets thrown down as he makes it to the 35-yard line. And it's a pickup of about eight on first. It'll be a second down and two. Great pickup by the senior on senior day. So the Spartans have a second down and two. Ball resting on a 35-yard line. The first down marker is the 33-yard line. Two wide outs for the Spartans as McFarlane and Williams, the tight end, switch to the far side of the field. Carter will hand it off to Savage. Savage scoots by, picks up the first down, and just about it. So he picks up two yards on second down to the 33-yard line. We have an injured Bulldog as well on the field. Timeout on the field. And the timeout will be taken on the field. We'll keep it here. As soon as we can get the injured player. It is number 10. That's Dwayne Nichols. South Carolina State. The training staff of the Bulldogs checking on him working on his right leg there checking the stability it looks like of the right knee hopefully everything's all right with him as well as Aaron Savage he's on the sideline as well as he sits on the training table Again, favoring his left knee as Nichols will be helped to the sidelines. Nichols is third on the team in tackles. He has 40 total tackles on the year. And he plays the free safety spot. So Jalen Evans 
We'll check in for him. Evans, a six foot, 170 pound red shirt sophomore. He'll be called on now as the injury to Nichols will push him to the sideline as the Spartans have a first down and 10 at the South Carolina State 33 yard line with 515 left to go here in the first quarter. Carter, play action, looking downfield, pressure coming, steps up in the pocket. Carter tries to get back to the line of scrimmage. He lost the football. But it looked like his knee was down. And it's the Bulldogs say they have it. The ruling on the field. Turnover. Recover by the defense. As the ball on the review. was picked up at the 26-yard line. A timeout will be taken on the field. We'll take it with them. With 5.01 left to go here in the first quarter. No score. And official review on the field. You're listening and watching... MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. We'll keep it here on the MEAC Digital Network as defense on the field for the Spartans didn't see it but it did look like his knee was down and didn't see if the ball was coming loose in the in the play where we were we might have been shielded a little bit as the replay booth will check it out saw Carter limping a little bit on the way back too so you know, maybe he uh, was on his knee, and that's when the ball came out. Hopefully, get a clear replay on this. After further review, the ruling on the field has been confirmed. The turnover, recovered by the defense, first down, 27-yard line. It will be a turnover as Carter's knee was not down, and the ball came loose, and it will be a first down for the Bulldogs, and that was the best drive offensively for the Spartans. As the Bulldog offense back out onto the field. And again, Morris in the backfield. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. The Spartans crowding the line of scrimmage. As the ball is looking downfield, pass is going to be complete. As Devin Coles got turned around there in the defensive backfield, making the reception for the Bulldogs was Shaquan Davis. A big pickup for Davis into Norfolk State territory. He has both of the receptions for the Bulldogs as that ball will be spotted at the 39-yard line of Norfolk State. Yeah, big 6'5 receiver just played jump ball on that one and grabbed it over Coles. It's a 34-yard reception as, again, looking downfield is the quarterback and getting nothing as Fields was hitting the backfield. Nice job there by Deshaun Dixon, the loss of one as Coles had good coverage that time on Davis, again, the intended target. Going to be the first sack of the day for the Spartans. Two sacks for South Carolina State. As Fields, again in the shotgun. Morris to his left, drops back to pass. Fields looks out in the flat and complete to Nick. As Nick gets inside the 35 down to the 30-yard line, it'll bring up a third down and short for the Bulldogs. Tackle on the outside made by Nairi Crinnelly. As the Spartans and force a third down and one. Fields in the shotgun. Morris to his left. Pass is going to be incomplete. Intended again for the freshman, Shaquan Davis. And Davis couldn't hold on to it. It'll be a fourth down. And he saw Bobby Price closing in on him. Dropped the ball. And the Bulldogs will keep their offense out on the field. For this fourth down and one. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. As Fields lines up in the shotgun, Morris to his right in the pistol. As the Bulldogs look to draw the Spartans off sides first with eight seconds on the play clock. Fields now with five. Morris again to his right. As the handoff goes to Morris, Morris in between the tackles pushes the pile forward. 
Enough for a first down. The time the South Carolina State offensive line just moved the Spartans back. Created some space and got the first down. No score here as the Bulldogs have a first down. At the Norfolk State 27-yard line. Corey Fields stays in the shotgun. Morse to his right. Four wide outs as Fields drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Looking to the towards the end zone intended for Demontres Burles. He was double covered by Savage. And Quinterly came back as well over the top. They'll bring up a second down and 10 for the Bulldogs. You're going to see that a lot today, Ross, with a little safety help on those receivers. Good receivers on South Carolina State squad. So all, you're going to probably see Quinterly or, or Price over the top a lot today. And South Carolina State, again, with four wideouts. Morris to the left of Fields as Fields drops back to pass again. Pass is going to be complete. Out in the flat, making the reception, getting inside the 20. On second down was Rodriguez Thomas. Down to the 19. That'll bring up a third down and two for the Bulldogs. Third down and two as, again, the Bulldogs. have made it a third down and manageable. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Nick comes in motion as it's a quarterback design roll and gets it out to Nick in the flat. Nick makes a couple people miss and gets taken down inside the 15 down at the 12-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Bulldogs. You see how versatile Nick is. We saw him at quarterback. He's catching passes. Just moving around, moving around for, uh, for South Carolina State. Clock now at two minutes here to go in the first quarter. No score, but the Bulldogs driving inside the 15-yard line as Nick comes in motion again, and we're going to have a flag thrown. It's going to be against the Bulldogs. Prior to the snap, false start, offense, number 52. Five-yard penalty, we play first down. Jalen Page, the right guard, was flagged for movement there. That backs the football out. Past the 15 to the 17-yard line. It'll be a first down and 15 for the Bulldogs. That time a little anxious on the Bulldogs' offense. As again, this is off of a turnover. The quarterback, Corey Fields, 5 of 10 today, has Morris to his right as he drops back to pass again. Looking downfield, pass is going to be complete inside the 5 and stretching it into... Maybe the end zone, nearly into the end zone, was Shaquan Davis. We're going to have a flag thrown near the line of scrimmage as well in the area of a hold. Or maybe a penalty against the defensive line against Norfolk State. We'll get what the call is. Here's the ball spotted on the one-yard line. Personal foul, hands to the face, defense number 99. Half the distance from the end of the play, automatic, first down. So it was a pass that was complete to the one-yard line, so they'll move the ball halfway to the goal, so it'll be a first down and goal from the half-yard line. As again, Shaquan Davis has done the heavy lifting here, receiving for the Bulldogs, and I think we're going to have a review. To see if Shaquan Davis got the ball across the line to go there for the Bulldogs for a touchdown. Let's see. He stretched it. He stretched it high as he got lifted up by the Spartans. Unless the officials decided that he his forward progress was stopped. We'll see what the call is going to be on the field. Today, your officials are Aaron Troy Singleton, the referee, assisted by Keith Anders, Chris Piero, Don Guidry, Quentin Payne, Christopher Brown, Harlan Bazell, and Clement Quiones. Again, the second review here in the first quarter. The second review on the last two drives as the fumble by quarterback Javon Carter was reviewed. And now, this play, see if Shaquan Davis 
reach the end zone. Here, and if he did, where the clock should be after the touchdown, if it was a score for the Bulldogs. Norfolk State coming into today's game, five and six. A lot to play for here today for South Carolina State. If they could win here this afternoon, they have an outside shot of making the. Uh, FCS playoffs as well if North Carolina A&T takes care of business, which they are. Right now against North Carolina Central, it is a 6-0 ball game. As we hear this call from Android Singleton. So it will be a first down and goal for the Bulldogs, Morris, will line up in the backfield. Two wide outs in the formation, both. Actually, one split to either side. Half yard line. For the Bulldogs, two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. The Spartans crowding the line of scrimmage as Morris gets the handoff running right side. He gets in to the end zone for the score. Touchdown, South, Carolina South Carolina State on the board first here at Dick Price Stadium. And it's a 6 nothing lead for the Bulldogs. Sometimes a good mix of offensive plays methodically down the field for the Bulldogs. And they get in first. 119 left to go here in the first quarter. The Bulldogs lead 6 nothing. Here is Bredesen will come on to attempt the extra point. The kick is up. It's high enough, long enough on the way, and good. It's a 7 nothing lead for the Bulldogs here with 119 left to go in quarter number one as the Spartans offensively will come out. Again, we'll check on the, the health of Jawan Carter, who got up slowly. He looks okay on the sideline, and the Spartan offense will have to rebound after that tough that tough fumble as they were moving the football down the field on their last possession. I was going to say the same thing, Ross. Their best drive of the game, um, you know, before the fumble. So uh, hopefully they can go back down the field, do the same thing on this drive coming up. Bredesen will kick away for the Bulldogs back deep. Kevin Johnson and Talbert. As Bredesen will get it away as he moves from the middle of the field to the right hash. Again, Talbert and Johnson back deep to return the kick for the Bulldogs who lead 7-0 over Norfolk State as Bredesen gets it away and it will be short in the direction of Talbert. He'll take it at the 10-yard line. Talbert looking over the left side, avoids one tackle, stays on his feet. As he passes the 30-yard line and passes the 35 before he's taken down at the 37-yard line by Andre Brown, the linebacker, on special teams. And the Spartans will have good field position to start this drive at their own 37-yard line. A good return by the freshman Talbert. Getting good field position for the Spartans. Again, seeing so many different... Special team, special, so many specialists back there, Ross, whether it's punter or kick team. As we'll see, Carter back out. Raquan Smith in the lineup. He mo comes in motion to the near side as Carter will empty the backfield. Pressure coming. Pass is going to be incomplete. Thrown in the direction of McElhaney as the Bulldogs brought another blitz. It's, it's been the story of the game so far for South Carolina State's defense, putting a lot of pressure on Carter. And making him uncomfortable in that pocket, making him get rid of the ball a lot earlier than he would like. Second down and 10 for the Spartans. As Carter will send two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Carter with Raekwon Smith to his right. As Carter quickly has to get out of trouble as he passes the 40-yard line. Pressure coming in on Carter quickly as he's taken down quickly as well on the stop was Gerard Jones and Carter 
is slow to get up. He has not gotten up. His has not gotten up, excuse me, as he got taken down awkwardly there around his neck by Gerard Jones. It's Carter being checked out now by the training staff of Norfolk State. We'll take some time out now to look at scores from around the conference. North Carolina a t now leading North Carolina Central 16-0. That's in the first quarter. As DeAndre Thomas warming up on the sideline. The sophomore from Washington hasn't had much game action this year, but has played a lot for the Spartans. He'll come on on the third down now in five as Carter sits up now for the Spartans with 59 seconds remaining in the first quarter Howard trailing Morgan State in the second quarter 8 nothing. Howard 1 and 10 1 and 6 in conference play Morgan State 3 and 8 overall 2 and 5 they've won their last two ball games after knocking off North Carolina a they knocked off Virginia University of Lynchburg last week as Carter still on the ground Again, he was hobbled on the last possession. And he gets up slowly. And he's favoring his right arm. His right shoulder. That is his throwing shoulder, so hopefully everything's all right with Juwan. This junior out of Richmond, Virginia. He's 3 of 7 today for 27 yards. He's been sacked twice as Thomas, the sophomore, comes on. Again, a capable backup for the Spartans. As Thomas sends two wide receivers out in this formation, one split to either side as he drops back to pass. Pressure coming. Pass is going to be complete to Williams. Williams looks like he will have enough for the first down. Out to the... 47-yard line, and we're going to have a flag thrown after the play. Way after the play. It was enough for a first down, it looks like, at the, the play, 47. Conduct, offense, number 77. 15 yards, first down. And Kenneth Kirby guilty of the penalty. It was enough for the first down, so the Spartans... We'll get a first, but they'll back up 15 yards. With 36 seconds to go. Nice safe throw there to get the sophomore quarterback in the rhythm, especially with the blitz coming in his face. So the Spartans will have a first down at their own 32-yard line. And, Ross, you're right. You know, you don't want to simplify much. You said he's a capable backup. So you keep the same playbook for Thomas, who's, a, who's capable of driving the Spartans down the field. But there's a conversation now. Between the umpire and I don't they're moving the chains forward, even though the ball was moved backwards. <laughs> After the penalty was called on Kenneth Kirby. They'll move the chains backwards now. The umpire didn't hear the call. And so it'll be a first down for DeAndre Thomas and the Spartans offense. Raquan Smith in the backfield with Thomas. As again, South Carolina State shows blitz. The handoff goes to Smith, he weasels through the initial hit and picks up maybe a half a yard, if that. And it probably will be the last play of the first quarter. We'll move to the second quarter with the Spartans trailing South Carolina State 7 0. We'll take this break. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. I'd like to bring you more of it the new 9 11 Timeless Machine.
we're back to Dick Bryce Stadium as we continue along today's ball game. It's 7 nothing South Carolina State leading Norfolk State. DeAndre Thomas in at quarterback for the Spartans. Four wideouts for Thomas as he drops back to pass. Looking over the middle of the field pass is going to be incomplete. Thrown in the direction of DK James. Thrown a little bit behind him and it was tipped in the middle of the field by the linebackers for South Carolina State. That'll bring up third down and 10 as Juwan Carter and Aaron Savage both being carted off the field now. We'll get you an update on them when we can as the Spartans trail 7-0. 14.57 left to go in the second quarter. And again, South Carolina State has begun to pin their ears back and come after the Spartan quarterbacks here this afternoon as Johnson, excuse me, Thomas drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, gets hit, and he'll be taken down. Yeah the, yeah, the Bulldogs have been putting pressure on, on, on now Thomas and Carter the whole game, Raw. So, as far as you know, not able to go down the field as the Spartans have been being pressured all game. It's the third sack of the afternoon as Spartans will punt again. Ryan Richter will get it away, and it will bounce, and it will be touched dead at the 32-yard line, and that's where South Carolina State will start this possession. With 14-21 left to go, it will be spotted at the 33-yard line. Nice job there of, of touching that ball there by McFarland to make sure it didn't bounce any further backwards. And South Carolina State will start with solid field position at their own 33. You know, Coach Scott talked about being resilient and persistent the whole year. and You definitely have to do that now with Carter being carted out in the locker room. So the Spartans have to come together now and play solid defense and get some offensive uh, play too. Morris back in the backfield with Fields as Morris gets a handoff running left side. Trying to bounce it outside. Bobby Price there as he knocks him down. Nice open field tackle there by Bobby Price, the senior. Defensive player of the week in the MEAC. Great play by the senior from Virginia Beach. A credit of five on first down for Morse. For Morris, it's just his third rush of the day. Excuse me, his fourth rush for now nine yards as he stays in in the backfield. Second down and five. Same formation as Fields. Hard count. Looks towards the sideline for the play. Fields with Morris to his right. Play action. Fields looking downfield. Pass is going to be incomplete. Nearly intercepted as Nigel Chavis had it in his hands twice. He did a good job of dropping back in his zone as the pass was intended for Thomas. And he got the tip. Then he got the camera. <laughs> I once had the interception. He had open green in front of him. He would have held on to it. It'll be a third down and five for the Bulldogs. Solid play there is the Spartans trying to get off of the field and get their offense back on. As Fields and Morris will be in the backfield. Four wide receivers, two split to either side as Fields drops back the pass. Blitz coming, looking downfield as the pass is going to be incomplete. Intended again for Shaquan Davis. A coverage on the play by Bobby Price. Also, Nyree Quinnelly out there. And it will be a fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. Again, the Spartans have that high safety, Ross. Patrolling the backfield. I'm so sorry, patrolling the back end. So that was a good play by Price to help out on the other side. A fourth down situation, and we'll see the punting unit come on. That's Cliff Benjamin. Gets set to punt. Back deep is Justin Smith for the Spartans. He's had a big return here today already as Benjamin will get the punt away, and it's low. Line drive, and will bounce and bounce near the sideline, and we'll roll dead at the 20-yard line, and that's where the Spartans will start their second drive of the second quarter with 13-18 left to go in the second quarter. We'll take a timeout on the field. You're watching MIAC Football on the MIAC Digital Network. We're back at Dick Bryce Stadium where you score 7-0. South Carolina State leads Norfolk State. Here with 13-18 left to go in the second quarter. DeAndre Thomas back in at quarterback for the Spartans. 
as he hands it off to Kevin Johnson and the Bulldogs ready for that one. Another loss on the play of four for Nor Norfolk State. And again, the defensive line has been uh, the catalyst here early, winning against the offensive line of Norfolk State. Yeah, just winning those upfront battles, Ross, in the trenches, putting so much pressure on the running backs and the quarterbacks in the first half. It'll be a second down and 14 for Norfolk State as Johnson stays in at tailback. Two wide receivers to the near side. McFarlane, the tight end, to the near side as well. Thomas awaits the snap. Drops back to pass with time. Now it runs out of time as he takes off. And wakes one man, missed still on his feet as he picks up the first down. Out past the 30 to the 32-yard line. Nice job there by the sophomore escaping traffic and trouble and picking up the first down. At that time, Thomas had no choice, had to get out of the pocket. Picks up a huge first down for the Spartans as they move the chains. Thomas. With two wide receivers to the far side, Justin Smith to the near side. Again, South Carolina State showing pressure. Thomas drops back to pass, steps up, and he'll take off again. Picks up maybe one on the play before he's taken down. It'll be a second down and nine. Bulldogs still in that zone, Ross, on defense. And Thomas just trying to find some open gaps. Just can't find any receivers down the field. Spartans will come out. Two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. The freshman Johnson to the right of Thomas in the shotgun on the second down and nine. And Johnson will get the handoff. He picks up positive yardage here out to the 35-yard line. It'll be a third down and seven for Norfolk State. Spartans again going with the four running backs today. That time Johnson with a little cutback wasn't able to get open through the hole. We're a third down and seven. Ball resting at the Norfolk State 35-yard line with 11-10 left to go here in the second quarter. Thomas in the shotgun. To his left is Gerald Hewlett as Thomas drops back to pass. Looking over the middle of the field pass is going to be incomplete. The Spartans looking for a penalty flag there as the Kendall James was covered tightly by Nichols. It'll be a fourth down for the Spartans. Yeah, a little crossing route by James as he was covered really tightly going over the middle and wasn't able to uh, create any separation. As Richter will come out to punt again back deep is Robinson as Richter. We'll get this punt away, and it's a spiral that will drive Robinson back to the 20-yard line. Robinson looking for a block, stays on his feet, and he's taken down nicely in the open field. Great job there by Treshawn Smith of making the stop at the 15 at the 20-yard line, and it'll be a timeout on the field. 7-0 your score, South Carolina State with the lead, and they'll have the football when we come back from this timeout. You're listening and watching MEAC Football on the MEAC Football Digital Network. We're back at Dick Price Stadium, South Carolina State leading Norfolk State 7-0 with the football as again, we'll see Corey Fields drop back to pass. Pass is going to be complete out in the flat. Running up the seam there, picking up around five yards again with Shaquan Davis, Bobby Price on the stop for Norfolk State. A pickup of five on first down. It'll be second down and five for the Bulldogs. That time Price covering a lot of ground on that tackle as he continues his hot play after being named player of the week. Again, Fields in the shotgun. LeBron Morse, the 5'10", 180. Now, and he'll get carried the big goal. He picked first out to 40. Pick up of on second down. It'll be a first down now for the Bulldogs at their own 40-yard line. At that time, they went to the running game. Been throwing the ball most of the day. Open up some holes. Got a first down for the Bulldogs. First down and 10 from the 40-yard line for the Bulldogs. Leading 7-0 as Fields drops back to pass. Pressure coming, and he's going to get hit in the backfield. And making the stop for the Spartans is Chris Myers. 
talked about him earlier, Ross. It's what his ninth sack of the season. As he doesn't like a stunt, goes up the middle with the pressure and gets the sack. Again, the Middle Tennessee transfer has been problematic for all offensive linemen here recently. Now he's got six here in conference play. Tied with Darius Royster of North Carolina Central. As Fields drops back to pass again, looking downfield. Has a man, and it's going to be thrown too far in front of Shaquan Davis. Again on the coverage, Devin Coles for the Spartans. And he got some help from Quinnelly as, as well at the safety position. Once again, these safeties going to help, have to help these, these uh, DBs on these receivers. And again, with a lot of man coverage, you'll see a lot of deep shots against these decent corners for the Spartans, but they're young. Right. And we'll see. They've held up well now. It's a third down and 16 for the Bulldogs. Four wide outs, two split to either side. LeBron Morris in the backfield. As Fields drops back to pass with time. Looks out in the middle of the field. Pass is going to be incomplete. Had a man. It was in and out of the hands of Demontres Burroughs. And it'll be a fourth down situation for the Bulldogs. Yeah, in and, in and out of the hands. But he saw Quinley coming over the top. And he thought twice about hauling it in. Incomplete. And the punting unit out for the Bulldogs. And Justin Smith will stand at his own 25-yard line as Cliff Benjamin. Will come out to punt again. For the Bulldogs as Benjamin gets the punt away. This one's high. This one's short. Justin Smith will allow it to land and it rolls out of bounds at around the 32 yard line and that's where the spartans will start this drive after the timeout norfolk state still trailing seven nothing to south carolina state with 838 left to go in the second quarter we'll take a timeout as you're watching miak football on the miak digital network it's never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine We're back at Dick Price Stadium. 7-0 your score. South Carolina State leading Norfolk State. The Spartans with the football. Backup quarterback in for Norfolk State, DeAndre Thomas. We'll have Gerald Hewlett to his right. Three wide receivers to the top of the formation. One to the near. As Thomas drops back the pass out of the hands of Justin Smith. Coverage on the play by Juan Moody. Check that. Zafir Kelly for South Carolina State. That'll bring up a second down. A quick out pass. Just didn't connect on that pass for, for the Spartans. Same formation. Second down and 10 now for DeAndre Thomas, who's one of four to start the ball game for five yards. He hit his first completion, has missed on his last three. And he'll a play action pass. is going to be in and out of the hands of the Kendall James. And that was a blown coverage in the secondary. If James could have held on to that one, that would have been six. Absolutely. He'd still be running, Ross, down the, down the um, middle of the field. He was wide open if he would have caught it. Anthony Williams was also open as Thomas chose the safe route there to James, and it will bring up a third down and 10. As Hewlett lines up to the left of Thomas. As play action, Thomas drops, steps back. Looking over the middle of the field, pass is going to be incomplete as he was hit as he threw the football intended for Gerald Hewlett. And that'll bring up a fourth down in the punting unit will come out for Norfolk State. Uh, like I said before, they're not going to simplify this offense. Thomas more than capable, but he has some open receivers in his last couple, last couple plays. He just has to take his time and, and look down the field. And Coach Scott encouraging the young man as he comes to the sideline. He had the opportunity there. Just couldn't. Uh, get it to complete it as Richter comes out. He'll stand at his 16-yard line. A flag is going to be thrown as this punt will be away. And it will be taken at the 26-yard line and getting swallowed up nicely was uh, Scott Robinson. Tackle made downfield quickly by the Spartans. Matt Hodges. 
And it's going to be offsides against South Carolina State as well. With 8.21 left to go in the second quarter. It would have been a five-yard penalty, so the ball will be spotted at the 35. If the Spartans elect to re-kick it. We'll see what the Spartans decide to do here. This ball was spotted at the 20. And Troy Singleton explaining everything to Coach Scott. And it looks like they're going to take it from the 20 from the end of the return. Well, they're going to decline it. And the ball will be spotted at the 20 yard line for the Bulldogs offensively. We have 104 yards on 25 plays, 29 plays for Norfolk State, 81 yards. So, this has been a defensive oriented game now. Is again Morris in the backfield for Corey Fields, who lines up at quarterback, two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near. Fields adjust things at the line of scrimmage with 8.21 left to go here in the second quarter. Motion now as the Spartans crowd the line of scrimmage. Fields hands it off to Morris. Morris hit by Remy Feltz, cleaned up on the play by Bobby Price. It'll be a pickup of about three on first down, second down and seven for the Bulldogs. Fields will look to the sideline again. The six foot, 188 pound red shirt freshman will have a second down and seven from the 23 yard line as Fields drops back to pass. Looking downfield, will take off and run. Cephas Harden there. Also, Nigel Chavis puts a hit on Fields, but not after he picks up about five yards. It'll be a third down now and two for the Bulldogs. And a huge third down here for the Spartans. Want to stop the momentum, get the ball back in good field position. Traquan DeBose will check in and the slot to the near side. And it'll be Tyrese Nick and Fields in the backfield. Both quarterbacks for the Bulldogs. Three wide receivers to the far side now as the Spartans change things up as Fields. Drops back to pass. It's going to be complete out to Nick. Nick. Looking for a block, got it, and picks up the first down. Yeah, Nick, good job of following his blockers on that screen. Got enough space and got the first down. Ball will be spotted at the South Carolina State 37-yard line. Clock moving with 6.40 left to go here in the second quarter. Morris in the backfield. Four wideouts as... Morris keeps in between the tackles as he's taken down. Remy Feltz there after the pickup of four. See the Bulldogs pick up the pace a little bit more here on offense. Four wideouts. Two split to either side for the Bulldogs. Morris stays in the backfield as Fields. The hard snap count and will have a false start called against the Bulldogs. False start. Offense, number three, five-yard penalty, second down. And Tyrese Nick, the guilty party there. So it'll bring up a second down and 11. Ball spotted at the 35-and-a-half-yard line for the Bulldogs. Fields with Morse in the backfield. Four wide outs, two split to either side as Fields drops back to pass, looking downfield. And it should be, that's going to be intentional grounding as that was, there was no one over there. That should be intentional grounding, and the ball didn't get back to the line of scrimmage either. And it will be intentional grounding. Intentional grounding, offense, number two. Lost a down, spot of the five, third down. Ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line as Nigel Chavis got cut. 
and still got up and put pressure in on the quarterback. Nice job there by the senior from Richmond, Virginia, of staying with the quarterback, Corey Fields, and great coverage downfield by the secondary of the Spartans. That's yeah, good. good play from all levels on the defense on that one. Third down in the country mile now for the Bulldogs. Yard line to gain is a 47-yard line. Moore stays in the backfield. Three wide outs, two split to the near side. One to the far. As Field. Play action, looking downfield, and he's going to get hit again in the backfield. Deshaun Dixon right there, and he'll drop him for a loss back to the 19-yard line. More pressure, Ross, on that South Carolina State offense, and they create the, they create the sack on that play. Nigel Chavis got a sack on the play before, and now we'll have a sack for Deshaun Dixon. That's his second of the day. And punting from the four-yard line is Dylan Bredson, Bredesen. Check that. It's Cliff Benjamin. As Benjamin will get the punt away. High kick. And it will go out of bounds. So the Spartans should have solid field position near midfield. The ball will be spotted at the 48-yard line with 5.04 left to go in a seven-point ball game. Benjamin, the specialist of the week. Decent kick, but the Spartans, great field position. We talked about getting that momentum back. Now Thomas just has to stand poised in that pocket and deliver some strikes down the field to his receivers. A 33-yard punt from Benjamin, and the Spartans will have it at their own 48-yard line, trailing 7-0. DeAndre Thomas, the sophomore from D.C., will have Raekwon Smith in the backfield. Four wideouts, two split to either side. On this first down play, Thomas awaits the snap, gets it. Play action, pressure coming, and he throws this one away in the direction of Marquis Ellington. And Ross, they're throwing blitzes every which way they can on that offensive line, confusing the Spartans a little bit up front. And again, they know Thomas is, is the backup, so he hasn't seen much of this all year. They've been pretty consistent here since the outset of the ball game. They've been sending pressure on Jawan Carter, who got hit a couple times early. And the Spartans now with 4.59 left to go in the second quarter. Trailing 7-0, we'll have another second down and long. Thomas sends Johnson in motion. Play action. Thomas looking over the middle. That pass is going to be incomplete, intended for Smith. And as soon as... The screen was red there. Nice job of coming through the back of Smith. Maybe even before the pass got there. By Chad Gilcrest, the linebacker for the Bulldogs. Yeah, again, if you're the offensive line, you have to identify the blitzes. Call them out and give Thomas a little bit more time in the pocket. Third down and 10 for Thomas, who's now one of seven. On today, the Spartans 4 of 14 overall throwing the football for just 32 yards. 8 of 17 for South Carolina State. Again, 81 yards of total offense on 31 plays for Norfolk State. Third down and 10. And a timeout's going to be taken by Norfolk State before the play clock expired. Timeout. Norfolk State. First charge, team timeout, 30 seconds. They have two more to go with 454 left to go here in the second quarter. And again, DeAndre Thomas has looked comfortable in the pocket. Been sacked twice here to uh, been sacked once here today. Uh, but just uh, hasn't gotten some help. A little bit, a couple drop balls. Uh, one that probably would have gone for a touchdown here uh, this afternoon. But again, you have to like what this sophomore do has, is doing, standing in the pocket. And uh, trying to make plays for his team. Oh, he definitely looks the part. You know, he's a 6'4", 210-pound quarterback. Has a nice arm as well. Dual threat. Can uh, get out of the pocket. Again, like you said, he had some open receivers earlier. Uh, maybe he can settle down and uh, go down the field and try to make some plays. There's the Spartans. Switch things up. Two wide receivers to the... Short side of the field, one to the near. That's Ellington as Thomas awaits the snap as James comes in motion. Thomas drops back to pass with time, steps up. Pass is going to be incomplete as he was hit 
from the backside. Coming off the edge was B.J. Davis, untouched, and Thomas had D.K. James, but the pressure came, and we'll see another punt for the Spartans. Yeah, Ross, he had a couple receivers down the field. McElwainy was open as well, but we have a blitz on the outside, untouched. Not much Thomas could do about it. So again, we'll see Richter out. To punt. The kick is away. This one's short. And it will bounce. And it was picked up by Norfolk State. The Spartans think someone touched it from the Bulldogs. And we'll see what the officials say as they will meet. As Zach Denton jumped on it. And the conversation by the officials and the defense for South Carolina State. Is coming out onto the field as they seem to think that it was touched by a bulldog as well. It was illegal touching, recovered South Carolina State ball at the spot. The previous play is under further review. Illegal touch. It, who knows? We'll <laughs> see as Antroy Singleton comes down the field. Sure about that one. Yeah, we might be able to see that replay. As uh, Zach Denton uh, do dove on the football as if to think that someone touched it or if it touched a, a player. We couldn't see it from our vantage point. And maybe we can see it on the replay here with 445 to go in the second quarter. As it's a quick review. After further review, the ruling on the field, the legal touching stands first down. Well, it's a legal touch. Oh. And South Carolina State, even their defense was on the field thinking that. You fooled, you fooled everybody. <laughs> so it will be South Carolina State football with 4.45 to go in the second quarter. A full complement of timeouts for the Bulldogs. Norfolk State with two as the ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line. That would have been a great opportunity for the Spartans in the red zone. It's Corey Fields back in at quarterback. Hands it off to Morris. Morris running left side. Not much doing there. He gets to the 20 before he's brought down. Desha Deshaun Dixon there for Norfolk State. Also, Ron Speller. And, you know, Spartans' defensive scheme has been on point today, Ross. High safety, stopping the run. He's doing a great job of stopping this uh, explosive uh, South Carolina State offense. That's Fields. Look at the sideline now with 4.17 left to go. In the second quarter, 7-0 lead is your score for the Bulldogs as Moore stays in the backfield. Fields, the two wide receivers to the near side, play action. Fields looking down the flat pass is going to be complete. Again to the freshman, Davis, as Devin Coles makes the stop. It's a pickup of three. So it'll be a third down and five for the Bulldogs. And Coles has had a solid game today on that outside. Challenging those tough receivers from the Bulldogs. Third down and five as the Spartans will see the Bulldogs look towards the sideline. Fields will have two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far, two deep safeties for Norfolk State here on this play. And it's going to be a delayed handoff to Morris. He bounces it outside. Morris lowers his shoulders and he'll pick it up the first down. A little, what do you call it, a head and shoulder fake. Throws the linebackers. Hand, hands it off to the running back. And he gets enough for the first down. Clock will continue to move with 3.10 left here in the second quarter. Two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. South Carolina State will get the football first to start this third quarter, too. Is a play action for Fields. He steps up, and he gets hit hard. 
as Nigel Chavis came off the edge. Also there with Cephas Harden and Deshaun Dixon. Pickup of a half a yard on the play. It'll be a second down for the Bulldogs, and Fields will get up slowly. Once again, that linebacker crew, great discipline. Didn't buy the fake on that, on that play and got the stop. Second down and nine for the Bulldogs as they methodically get the play in from the sideline. Two wide receivers split to either side as Nick comes in motion. Now it's three wide receivers to the near side. The Spartan show man as Fields looks downfield. Pass is going to be complete to Burroughs. Burroughs eludes one tackle and he gets taken down near midfield. Quinterly and Brandon Savage there for the Spartans. But that's the first catch on the day. For the all-conference wide receiver, Demontres Barrows, the senior, for South Carolina State at the Bulldog 48-yard line. And Burrows gets up slowly, and he'll move to the sideline for this first down play. Nick again in motion, and it's going to be a jet sweep there to Nick, and he's going to get knocked out of bounds nicely. Bobby Price. Scrapes down the line of scrimmage to limit Nick to a pickup of three into Norfolk State territory at the 49. The senior price, great containment that time. Gets a stop, big hit, out of bounds. Burrows back onto the field. Not anymore as he comes to the <laughs> sideline. You saw in that catch, Ross, why Burrows is an all-conference player. As Fields will have it, 135 left to go. Actually, 136 left to go here in the second quarter. Fields dropped back to pass, a straight drop. Pass is going to be incomplete. Rifle to pass, intended for Thomas. It'll bring up third down for the Bulldogs. And that time, Russell, the junior, I'm sorry, the Russell, the sophomore, great coverage. And we talked about it earlier, Ross, great coverage on the back end for the Spartans. It'll be a third down now and seven for the Bulldogs with 133 left to go here in the second quarter. As Fields looks through the sideline. We'll get the call from upstairs. Third down, seven. Fields gets the snap. Blitz comes looking downfield. Fields throws it out of bounds. Again, looking in the direction of Davis and the ball thrown out of bounds. And coverage on the plate by Devin Coles, and it will bring up a fourth down, and we'll see the punting unit come out again with 128 left to go here in the second quarter. And once again, Ross, great coverage. Coles, the freshman, having a tough task of taking these receivers, but doing a great job. Again, we'll see Cliff Benjamin. He'll get the punt away, and this one is a beauty. And it will go out of bounds inside the 10. Nice job there by Benjamin of painting the Spartans back deep at their own four. As Bobby Price did a nice job of getting everyone away from the football, but not uh, didn't get the bounce the Spartans wanted as it went straight out of bounds. Instead of into the end zone, it'll be a first down for Norfolk State deep in their own territory. And DeAndre Thomas in the Spartans offense. Back onto the field, and with 122, South Carolina State, with all three of their timeouts, of the Spartans have to hopefully at least get one first down here on this drive. You have to be careful inside the five. With an inexperienced quarterback in right now, yes, I just have to be careful here for the Spartans. Johnson in the backfield. As Thomas handed off to Johnson, running right side, gets back to the line of scrimmage, might have gotten the five yard line before he's taken down. And the Bulldogs will take their first time out as the Spartans will have a second down and nine. First charge timeout, South Carolina State, 30-second timeout. Again, a 30-second timeout taken by the Bulldogs. As the Spartans have rushed now for 50 yards on the day. 82 yards of total offense, 141 for the Bulldogs on 39 plays. 
you know, with, again, with Thomas at quarterback, interesting, it, it'll be interesting to see what the Spartans do here deep in their territory at the five-yard line. With only a minute left, minute and 15 seconds left. As the Spartans have a third, second down and nine from the five-yard line. Johnson stays in at tailback. And Johnson again gets a handoff over the right side. Big hole for Johnson. Johnson stays on his feet past the 25. Gets out to the 30-yard line. And we're going to have a flag thrown at the 10. Justin read the guilty party, so that will back the Spartans up to the 10-yard line. And a timeout's going to be taken by South Carolina State with 109 left. They have one remaining. They can take after this second down play as the clock would have uh, restarted. But again, the best play offensively on the ground for the Spartans there was called back after the hold. North Carolina A&T making sure that there's no question of who the <laughs> regular season champion will be. And again, there was a lot of uh, speculation of what could happen if Central, still a lot of time in that ball game, yeah. were to knock off North Carolina A&T. But right now, the zero's on the wrong side for <laughs> both this South Carolina State and Norfolk State team. As Thomas back at the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Raquan Smith in the backfield, and we're going to have a flag thrown. It's going to be offsides with contact against the Bulldogs. Offsides with contact. Defense, number 91. Five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. So it'll be a second down now and four for Norfolk State. As Roderick Perry will be the guilty party. It'll be a second down and four, and we'll see Raquan Smith stay in the backfield. As again, South Carolina State expecting run. And Thomas will throw it downfield, looking for Justin Smith, and tosses it out of bounds. It'll be a third down, and... The Bulldogs can hold on to the time out here with 105 left. And four yards to go for a first down for Norfolk State. Well, Bulldogs might have been expecting Rum, but they had great coverage on that outside pattern from Smith. And of course, like you said, now they don't have to use the timeout since the ball went out of bounds on a passing play. Third down and four for Thomas with Raquan Smith to his left. Two wide receivers split to either side. As DK James comes in motion to the near side. Carp, excuse me, Thomas drops back to pass. He escapes the traffic. Looking downfield, he has a man wide open. That's Anthony Williams, the tight end. He sneaks behind the defense, and he gets taken down out at the 39-yard line. And the Spartans will keep it going with 57 seconds to go. Nice job by the sophomore finding Williams, the tight end. Williams, 6'3", 235-pound junior with a nice catch. Spartans with two timeouts remaining and a first down and 10. Dropping back the pass is Thomas. He steps up in the pocket, eludes the traffic, runs towards the sideline, picks up the first down and more. Inside of South Carolina State territory at the 47-yard line with 43 seconds to go. The poise of this quarterback, Ross, a sophomore, finds Williams down the seam, now gets a run, great awareness, and gets out of bounds. Smith will stay in the backfield for the Spartans as well as Johnson, who will line up in the slot to the near side for the second down. 43 seconds remaining. The Spartans trailing 7-0. Kevin Johnson in motion as Thomas drops back to pass. Looking down the field, he'll take off again. A lot of room to run for the sophomore. He runs towards the sideline, and he'll get pushed out of bounds after picking up the first down at the 31. Again, he's not accounted for. Gets out of the pocket. Plenty of green to run. He gets another first down for the Spartans. Ball will be spotted at the 31, and DeAndre Thomas will allow the Spartans to sub as well. 
getting out of bounds both times, not allowing the defense to get in, as South Carolina State has done a, a good job of covering, but turning their back to the quarterback. Hey, great coverage downfield for the Bulldogs, but like you said, nobody watching the quarterback. Empty backfield as Thomas has seven seconds to get the playoff. Thomas awaits the snap. Blitz comes. Looks downfield, and he's going to get hit, but he escapes traffic. Looks out for D.K. James. James makes the stop, makes the catch, and he tries to get out of bounds and does. With 29 seconds to go, <laughs> slight Houdini move there by DeAndre Thomas. As he looked like he was stopped dead to rights in the backfield as James was knocked out of bounds or tackled by Kendall Moultrie. Again, Thomas, 6'4", 210, big quarterback. Got out of that. Scrum, so to speak, and gets uh, gets a, a complete pass. Two timeouts, 29 seconds remaining here in the second quarter for the Spartans. Thomas drops back to pass with time, steps up, and now runs out of time. Looking downfield, stays on his feet, looks for a block, and gets hit out of bounds. And we have more pushing and shoving after the play as the Spartans with 21 seconds to go. We'll have another first down. Well, we don't know. The chain's moved. <laughs> it will be a third down, we think. As the officials will stop. Time out on the field. I'll check that. Reset the chain. The time out on the field to reset the change. Josh Nardone. Warming up, but the Spartans have a third down now and one for the first down. You know, Thomas trying to go down the field, Ross. Great, co great coverage, great coverage by uh, the Bulldogs. But Thomas able to use his legs. Chains have been restored. Third down, one to go. To pick up some yards on this on this drive here. Ball spotted at the 22-yard line of South Carolina State. The Spartans with the third down and one. Chains were restored, but still looks like chains are down on the sideline now. As the Spartans send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. That's Justin Smith. South Carolina State showing blitz. They drop back. The pass is going to be... Incomplete DK James was open again and he drops another one. Yeah, James has been open all night. And you can't ask DeAndre Thomas to do much more than than what he did on that drive. And James would have had enough for a first down and might have been able to scoot towards the end zone as the Spartans now will try a 39 yard field goal from the right hash. At the holder, Stuart Anderson, Dominique Jordan will snap it. Nardone. Won't get it off. His little snap is low, but the kick is up high enough. It's long enough. It is up, and it's through, as that one was close to being a delay of game with 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. The Spartans get on the board, and you can thank the legs of DeAndre Thomas there for making that happen. And 13 seconds to go in the second quarter. That's a lot of life now given to the Spartans offensively as they put three on the board going into halftime. Absolutely, Ross. You get some points on the board. And more importantly, you have a little momentum. Seeing what Thomas can do, not only with his arm, he has he's had some open receivers, but he's using his legs in that last drive to get the offense going. Thomas, 3 of 13 today for 37 yards. And the Spartans will kick it away. There's Traquan DeBose will line up at his 10-yard line. Awaiting the kick of Josh Nardone. Again, 8-7 as you scored halftime, Morgan State and Howard. Halftime, 30-0. As your score is Josh Nardone gets his kick away and it will be fielded by DeBose. 
And he's taken down at the 29-yard line. Dale Craig there for the Spartans, the senior linebacker, makes the stop with nine seconds to go here in the second quarter. So, again, if you're the Spartans, you go in the locker room with three, only down seven to three. Momentum going into the half. Defense is, is playing well in all, all phases. Offense is moving the ball. Just have to correct a few minor mistakes, and they'll be fine in the second half. As the Bulldogs will take a knee, and that's the way we'll go into halftime. Norfolk State trailing at the break 7-3 to South Carolina State. We'll take this time out and come back with more right here on the... The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 9-11 timeless machine hello and welcome back to dick bryce stadium you're being serenaded now by the spartan legion the marching band here at norfolk state university in a 7-3 ball game south carolina state got on the board first but the spartans scored with 13 seconds to go in the second quarter to trail by four at the halftime break spartans Led by DeAndre Thomas. He has 49 yards rushing today to go along with 37 yards of passing off the bench today with Jawan Carter being injured early. On the other side, Fields leads the way for the Bulldogs. 10 of 21, 129 yards. He's been sacked four times. Morris with 38 yards rushing today. Davis with 77 yards receiving on the afternoon. Norfolk State trailing by four at the break. When we come back, we'll have a special interview here at Dick Price Stadium. You're listening to NSU Football on the NSU Sports Network. <laughs> we are back here on NSU Hot 91 Football Halftime Show here on Senior Night with offensive lineman Dominique Jordan and running back Aaron Savage. Dom, talk about what Nova State program has mean to you and give me maybe like one or two of your favorite memories here as an athlete. I feel like one of my, like, what energy has meant to me is meant a lot. It's meant to my personal growth and growth over the years, you know. Coming out of high school, you know what I'm saying, I didn't really know what position, I, like I said, I was going to be playing, whether I knew I wanted to play offensive line at Norfolk State, but I felt like maybe they didn't know what I brought to the table. So coming to training camp, I was able to finally uh, – come to get my first start my freshman year as a true freshman with no register, you know, it meant a lot to me to do that. And I felt like not many have been able to do that or accomplish that, especially on, as the offensive line position demands and what it requires. So I felt like through those years and going through a few journeys throughout my four years of being here and now to have a try and grab a piece of the MEAC title and go six and six out of better than the four and seven seasons we've been having, I feel like that's what I've came here to do. I came here to win. And I feel like that's what I've been able to brought to the table. If you could sum your career up in, like, say one word, what would you say? If I had to use one word, I'd say resilient. All right, Aaron, same question for you. Uh, talk a little about your career at Norfolk State and one of your favorite, one or two of your favorite moments. Norfolk State has meant a lot to me. I kind of feel like I grew as a man. Um, you know, coming in as a freshman, there were a lot of things I was, like, unclear about, um, you know, considering not just football, but, you know, school and everything like that. And, um, I was able to learn a lot through the game of football, like resilience, you know, hard work, my, my ability to, you know, persist through a lot of different situations. I, can, I, I can't speak enough about how much this football program has meant to me and how much it's allowed me to grow as a person. Um, my favorite memory, I would say, is the Delaware State game from last year um, when I scored a touchdown and my little brother scored a touchdown. It kind of, you know, that meant the world to me, being able to, see that guy again in the end zone and you know the sky's going to be the limit for him and I know he's going to do a great job you know carrying the savage name on um, moving forward same thing I asked Dom if you could you know wrap up your career if you can in one word what would you use a, a roller coaster <laughs> the only word I could I could think of immediately all right thank you guys officer lineman Dom Jordan and we have Aaron Savage we'll be back at, at the NSU halftime show the new 9-11 timeless machine And we're back on NSU Football Halftime Show. Continuing our senior reflections, we have linebacker Nigel Chavis and DB Bobby Price. Um, Bobby, starting with you, if you could just 
what's something um, in the four years that you've been here, what's one of your uh, most memorable moments of your career? I'll say one of my most memorable moments was my freshman year at the Battle of the Bay game against Hampton University. I caught an interception at the end of the game to basically seal the win. Uh, it meant a lot to me coming from a knee injury and coming back to uh, finish up my freshman year and catch an interception. It meant a lot to me. Very special. And after you walk off the field for your last game, what's something that you can say you've taken away from this program? Uh, this meant a lot to me. It made me very mature. It made me a man. And I can't thank this program enough for what it's done. And Nigel, same for you. In the four years you've been here, what's one of your most, has been one of your most memorable moments? Uh, one of my most memorable moments was had to win this year's homecoming. We pitched a 48-0 shutout over Morgan State. The first shutout I had since I've been here in Prater. I think it, um, it ain't happened in a couple of years around here. So yeah, I feel like that's one of my most memorable moments. And same thing, when you walk off the field on Saturday, what's something that you feel like you've taken away from the program? Um, taken away from Norfolk State. I feel like being here over the years, it had me grow as a person, as a man, like everyone pretty much said. But I feel like it helped me build better relationships with my teammates, everyone I come encounter with. I'm thankful for it. And the last thing, if you could sum your career up in one word, what would it be? If I could sum my career up in one word, it would be, uh, it'll be fantastic. Thank you guys for joining me. We'll be back for more after this on NSU Sports Network. The world's never gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911 Timeless Machine. We're back live at Dick Bryce Stadium here in Norfolk, Virginia on the MEAC Digital Network. Your score is 7 3. South Carolina State scores early in the first quarter after a turnover with 119 left to go. Uh, LeBron Morris with a one yard run, and the Spartans get on the board late in the end of the second quarter. It's a 39 yard field goal by Josh Nardone to make it a 7 3 ball game at the break. It was a 10 play, 74 yard drive that was led. By DeAndre Thomas, the backup quarterback who's in because DeAndre, excuse me, because Jawan Carter was knocked out of today's ball game and will not return here. News from the training staff. And so uh, the junior quarterback will not be playing uh, for the rest of the ball game. Thomas has looked well, especially with his legs today. Six carries for 49 yards. Oh, very, very promising, Ross, uh, with Thomas back there at quarterback. Um, you know, using his legs, like you said, he's had open receivers down the field. If he can just take his time and find those receivers. But um, as far as his legs, Ross, you're right. He's done a great job of, of, of getting open with his legs and making plays. Scores from around the conference. Howard leading Morgan State 13-8 to right now. Uh, 13 unanswered in the third uh, from the Bison. That one's late in the third. Uh, early in the third, North Carolina a and has scored once. Already, 33 nothing is that score. St. Francis over Delaware State in the second quarter. 21 to nothing is that one. And in about 25 minutes down in Orlando, Florida a and and Bethune-Cookman will do battle. Bethune-Cookman has lost three straight here over the last few weeks. And they look to right the ship against the Florida a and Rattlers, who are now 9-1, 7-0 in conference, not eligible for the Celebration Bowl uh, because of uh, academic APR progress or progress towards the APR. But what a season they've had, no matter what, 9-1, 7-0 in, in conference play. They've had a great season. Uh, you know, all eyes are, are in North Carolina, but... Not many people have talked about that game uh, between Florida Aim and Bethune Cookman. It has a lot to do with the uh, MEAC standing as well. Quinn Williams just uh, completed a touchdown pass to Kyle Anthony for six yards, and that one in Howard. Now leads Morgan State as the Spartans will kick it away. South Carolina State a little late. Getting back onto the field. Out of the tunnel. And Ryan Richter will kick it away. We're about ready for the start of the second half. They are ready as 
The Bulldogs won't have enough players on the field, but the kickoff is deep. And running left side, out past the 25, getting hammered out of bounds by Shavali Williams. Was Traquan DeBose. <laughs> Solid hit there by Chevalier. To say the least, Ross, what a hit. As like you said, the Bulldogs didn't have enough players on the field, and he took a massive hit going out of bounds. 1454 left to go here in quarter number three. South Carolina State will have the first possession of the ball game here in the second half. Leading seven to three. Again, Corey Fields in the shotgun. LeBron Morris behind him. Nine carries for 38 yards for... We're going to have a stoppage of play, and it looks like it might be a review. The previous play is on the further review. And it's coming from upstairs. Probably to see if it's going to be a targeting by Shavai Williams. I didn't see a flag on that, didn't I? It wasn't, but they can call it from... They can call it from up here, just to look at it. And normally, if they take this long to look at it, I just want to make sure that it wasn't a targeting penalty. Ball spotted on the 27-yard line. And I guess the big issue there is whether Shavahi Williams will be able to stay in the ball game or not. As the review is over, we'll see what and Troy Singleton and the replay officials found out. After further review, call of targeting has been added on the uh, return uh, kickoff team number 11. Number 11 has been disqualified. 15 yards, he added to the end of the play, first down. So, instead of starting at the 27, this ball will be moved Excuse me, this ball will be moved out past the 40-yard line. And Shavai Williams. Will be ejected from the ball game. And these suspensions will be. Uh, able to take place next year. So he'll miss the first half of next year's first game for the Spartans as South Carolina State looks to go deep on the first play and it's complete out to Burroughs. Burroughs still on his feet and he laterals it back and still on his feet for the Bulldogs down to the 15-yard line of Norfolk State was Shaquan Davis. <laughs> oh, what a play. What a heady play by uh, heads up play by Burroughs as he had three Spartans around him and he tosses it to Davis and it gets a couple extra yards after the catch. Corey Fields now 11 of 30. Big play there for Fields as the ball will be spotted at the Norfolk State 16-yard line. So not a good start to the third quarter for the Spartans as Fields and Morris and, excuse me, and Davis in the backfield. The handoff will go to Davis in between the tackles. Cephas Hardens brings him down at the 13-yard line. It'll be a second down now and six after a pickup of four by LeBron Morris. You see it's starting to rain a little bit here. At Dick Price Stadium, Ross. See how much of an effect that has on the ball the rest of the game. Fields quickly back to the line of scrimmage. As Fields gets the call from the sideline with 13.49 left to go. Fields play action. Looking over the middle of the field. Pass is going to be complete to Burroughs. And Burroughs will have the football taken away from him. Norfolk State came up with it. And we'll see what the call is as Burroughs is down at the one-yard line. Now, Reed Quinley has the football in his hands. Burroughs thought he might have reached it over the goal line. The conversation is going to still continue. Ruling on the field. Far progress stopped at the one-yard line. First down. And they're going to say that 
Burrow's forward progress was stopped at the one. The previous play and the previous the play will be under review. The review booth, booth has been pretty busy today, Ross. Well, see what they call on this one. And the Spartans looking to get the football at the one. The Bulldogs looking to have a first down and goal from the one. Again, Burroughs, uh, after the catch, using his size on a couple of those catches today, was reaching for the end zone. It looked like the ball might have come out. but And it's kind of hard to figure. It's kind of hard to. It's kind of hard to say there from upstairs if his forward progress right. is stopped. That's a judgment call absolutely, by the officials, and I don't think there's much they can do. After further review, the ruling on the field of forward progress stands. First down. And the Spartans, again, on this drive. Have been hit with a couple of reviews that went against their favor. The targeting on Shavai Williams, and then the play there is LeBron Morris is in the backfield. He has one one yard touchdown rush today. I'm trying to look for a second, and he gets to the goal line, and he backs his way in for the score. Like you said, Ross, not a good way to start the second half if you're the Spartans. And now the uh, Bulldogs get in the end zone to extend their lead. It's a 13-3 lead, 13-25 left to go here in the third quarter. As the extra point is on the way, he nearly blocked, but it is up and through. And the Spartans now trail 14-3 here with 13-25 left to go in the third quarter. A timeout will be taken on the field. We'll take the timeout with them. Here's the rain starts to fall at Dick Price Stadium. The Spartans trail by 11. You're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. You more of it. The new 911. Timeless machine. We're back live at Dick Price Stadium as the Bulldogs have extended their lead now to 14 to 3. As Bredesen comes out to kick off back deep. Is Johnson who will take it at the 14-yard line. Johnson looking for a crease. Gets one. Dives across the 25-yard line to the 26-yard line. And that's where the Spartans will start this drive with DeAndre Thomas as the Bulldogs move 73 yards in four plays. Highlighted by two DeAndre Burroughs. Demontrez Burroughs receptions. He has now three for 65 on the day. His longest was a 36-yard reception, and the Spartans now have their largest deficit of the day at 14-3. Burrow's relatively quiet before that drive, but he showed why he's all-conference, making two huge catches. As Gerald Hewlett will be in the backfield, as the quarterback will keep it, DeAndre Thomas pulls it and picks up three on first down to the 29-yard line on the quarterback keeper. He gets up slowly. Looks towards the sideline. As Thomas was pulled down by Xavier Johnson. It'll be a second down for the Spartans as Thomas sends three wide receivers to the near side. And Hewlett stays in the backfield. As Thomas drops the football. And now we'll have to roll right. And gets pushed down out of bounds and hit an extra time out of bounds on the sideline. And the girl, and, oh, I'm sorry, Ross. We, we wondered if the weather was going to make an impact or make a difference. And you saw the ball slip out of Thomas's hand before he tried to throw it. That might have messed up a little rhythm down the field. It's a third down now and six for Norfolk State. They give Thomas a credit of one yard. B.J. Davis pushes him out of bounds. 
Four wideouts on the play for Thomas. Thomas will drop back the pass. With time, pass is going to be incomplete. Nearly picked off. Jumping the route was Zafir Kelly. And it'll bring up a fourth down situation for the Spartans. Yeah, Kelly read the play all the way. Had an opportunity to jump on the ball, and he did so and knocked it away. Incomplete for the Spartans. McElhaney, the intended recipient of the pass. And the Spartans will go three and out here on their first possession of the third quarter. As it's a low snap. And it should be a penalty flag as a nice punt by the Spartans as it will be returned by Robinson. Robinson gets taken down out of bounds, but the punter was rough there. As Ryan Richter got the punt away. And Ross, I guess the low snap helped helped him out. As it took two bounces before it got to Richter. It will be a personal foul, and the Spartans will get the benefit of that one. So the ball will be spotted at the 45-yard line after the penalty. Couldn't hear who was on. But the Spartans will have a first down and 10 now at their own 45-yard line. So the drive stays alive with 11.51 left to go here in the third quarter. That's the fifth penalty of the night for South Carolina State for 30 yards. Maybe that's the break they needed to get this offense going in the second half. The Spartans will come back out onto the field. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Thomas in the shotgun. Hewlett in the backfield with him as Johnson comes in motion. The handoff goes to Hewlett, rushing right side. Big hole, Hewlett steps outside, spins, picks up about eight on first down inside of South Carolina State territory to the 47-yard line. Great move by Hewlett. Little tiptoe sidestep action. It's a good pickup on that first down run. Four wide outs, three to the near side, one to the far. This is the formation that's given the Bulldogs defense some troubles here as the handoff goes to Hewlett. Rushing right side, he'll pick up the first down. And he's knocked down out of bounds as well. Inside the 40 to the 38, but not before he picks up a first down. You're right, Ross. It does give the Bulldogs a little confusion. You're not sure what they're going to do, whether it's going to be a pass or run. That time, Hewlett got two runs and got the first down as they moved the chains. Hewlett stays in the backfield. Four wideouts, two split to either side. Now in motion to the near side is D.K. James. Again, it's Hewlett. Hewlett cuts back, picks up around two to the 36-yard line on first down. And the Spartans... We have a second down and we'll say eight. Hewlett, key running back on this drive, the senior from Springfield, Virginia. Again, the Spartans have used four running backs today. Yes, again, Thomas in the shotgun. Awaiting the snap. Gets it. Hands it to Hewlett again, and Hewlett escapes one tackle. Did a good job to lose just four <laughs> yards on the play. Back past the 40 to the 41. That'll bring up a third down. It's a third and long situation for the young quarterback. South Carolina State. Looks like they want to play a little coverage here. And try to get pressure with their front four. As Thomas will drop back. Steps up. Looking down the field. And he'll take off. Gets inside the 35 down to about the 34. A pickup of about six on third down. And might be four down territory here for the Spartans. And you called it, Ross. Great coverage in the back end for South Carolina State. That time Thomas had nowhere to throw the ball. It'll be a fourth down and six for Norfolk State. After the pickup of seven for Thomas. Spartans will have it with 9.04 left to go in the third quarter. Trailing 14 to three. Going for it here on fourth down. As James moves in motion. Thomas awaits the snap. Drops back to pass. With time. Steps up in the pocket. Runs left. 
has to make a move, does, and lowers his shoulder, picks up the first down inside the 25. Down at the 24-yard line, first down for the Spartans. And we talked about Thomas' size, 6'4", 210. That time he looked like a fullback running over South Carolina State players. Timeout yep. on the field. Defensive injury. Media timeout. Tyrell Goodwin will be on the field. His immediate timeout will be taken on the field. We'll take it with him. As the ball will be spotted at the 24-yard line, the Spartans have a first down when we come back as we take a break. As you're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. world's never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine and we're back here at dick price stadium 14-3 lead for south carolina state but the spartans driving at the south carolina state 24 yard line as the handoff will go to Hewlett. He tries to bounce it outside, and Hewlett will get stopped for a loss of two. Pass the 25 to the 26. Time Hewlett wasn't able to get to the outside. Tried to go inside. So I've got a steep defensive line with the push to get Hewlett down. As the Spartans quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Three wide receivers to the near side. Hewlett stays in the backfield. As Thomas will pick up the snap. It was low. He escapes traffic. Uh, gets a head full of steam as he lowers his shoulder inside the 20. Gets down to the 16-yard line. Again, Ross, that's, that's the size of, of Thomas. And that was a pickup of about 10. No fear. On the play, and there'll be a third down and short. And again, that snap by Dominic Jordan never got off the ground. And again, you know, we, we talked about how the weather would affect things here in the second half. That's the, twice we've seen the ball slip. As Thomas will send a man in motion. It's going to be a handoff off to Hewlett. Hewlett over the right side will get enough yardage, it looks like, for the first down inside the 15 down to the 14 with 7.15 left to go. Here in the third quarter, the Spartans will have a first. And Hewlett showing off on senior day today. Good second half. First ten for the green goal. Nice. Spartans offensive line has won some battles and lost some here, but on this drive, they're winning a lot on the ground. As Thomas and the Spartans have done a good job of keeping drives alive, including one on fourth down here. As Thomas will send two wide receivers to the far side, one to the near side. That's Ellington. As Thomas drops back to pass, looking into the end zone, he lobs one up for Ellington, and he just has to throw this one away as he was hit as soon as he threw it. Coverage was tight on the outside, but Bruce Johnson, the DN, was right in the face of Thomas as soon as he threw the football. Yeah, not sure if he was trying to throw it away, but again, like you said, Ross, the pressure will cause you to do things you don't want to do. And that time it was incomplete as he was looking down the field. And again, the pressure on the quarterback has been uh, pretty consistent here today for the South Carolina State defensive line. Thomas with a second down and 10 from the South Carolina State 14. Hewlett in the backfield. As Thomas will hand it off to Hewlett on the delay. Looks left side. Hewlett inside the five. Lowers his shoulder. Gets into the end zone for the score. A 14-yard touchdown run for Gerald Hewlett, the senior here on Senior Day. Gets the rushing touchdown in the Spartans. Answer the touchdown from South Carolina State now trailing 14-9. to nine. You saw the acceleration from Hewlett as he gets to the outside, lowers the shoulder, gets six for the Spartans. Again, solid blocking uh, by the tight end. McFarland got a good block on the edge, and the Spartans now trail 14-9. to nine. Nardone on to attempt the extra point. Out of the hold of Stuart Anderson, Dominique Jordan to snap. As it's low, Nardone gets it away. It's high enough. It is up and three through. Nice job there by Stuart Anderson of putting the ball down in the Spartans. Now trail 14 to 10 with 6.26 left to go here in the third quarter. We'll take a timeout as you're watching MEAC football right here on the MEAC Digital Network. Proudly bring you more of it. The new 911. 
timeless machine. We're back live here with 626 left to go here in the third quarter. Norfolk State now trailing 14 to 10 as Josh Nardone comes away with the kick. It's a squib kick that will be picked up at around the 17-yard line and returned out to the 27 by Traquan DeBose. And the Spartans have forced South Carolina State deep in their own territory for their second possession of the third quarter. The Spartans scored on a 14-play, 73-yard drive. The first touchdown of the day. And for Gerald Hewlett, that's his first rushing touchdown of the day as South Carolina State back out onto the field. Morse in the backfield. As the handoff will go to Morse, and he trips up in the backfield. Had a little bit of an edge on the outside, but the turf monster got him. <laughs> Who can adjust to that? As Morris picks up one on second down. Now will be nine yards to gain a first down for the Bulldogs. Morris stays in the backfield. Again, Morris will get the handoff running left side. Bobby Price takes him down after a pickup of one at the 30-yard line. So it'll be a set third down now and eight. Now you, this time you see Bobby Price in the stack right into the line of scrimmage making a tackle uh, to bring the running back but down. So it will be a third down for the Bulldogs. Third down and we'll say seven. Four wideouts for South Carolina State. Two split to either side. Fields looks to the sidelines with 5.15 left to go in the third quarter. Fields, quick drop pass is going to be complete again on the slant to Burroughs. And the slant has given the Spartans problems here with Burroughs, and he picks up another first down. That's his favorite route, and he's done a great job using his size, shielding off the defenders and making some yards after the catch as well. And with 4.49 left to go, the Bulldogs have a first down at their own 43. Fields now 13, actually 14 of 25 today, over 200 yards as the handoff will go to Morris. He runs left side. Kyron Speller, the first to hit him there, and he drags his way back to the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up a second down and 10. Nice job there by Speller. Speller. You know, off of sheds a couple blocks and gets the tackle for a short gain. With 410 left to go in the third quarter. South Carolina State will look to take some time off the clock here. Leading by four and give their defense a little bit of a rest. Here's Nick comes in motion. The handoff will go to Morris, running left side. Got a head full of steam, gets out near midfield, and they'll give him credit to midfield. A pickup of about five on the play, a six. to bring up a third down and three. Fields will have a third down and three. Four wide outs. As Fields now looks to the sideline with 3.20 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Four-point lead for the Bulldogs. As Fields drops back to pass with time. Going to look to Burles. Burles makes the catch after juggling it as he beat Brandon Savage again. Again, Burles will be inside the 20. Yeah, that's why he's all conference. Great route in between two Spartans and makes a catch as he tiptoes out of bounds. Ball will be spotted at the 18-yard line and out of the slot there. He's just made a living here in this third quarter. Burrell's now five reception, 110 yards on the day. And Fields has been looking for his leading receiver all half as the 
Handoff goes to Morris in between the tackles. One man to beat gets inside the five. We'll pick up the first down. It'll be a first down and goal as Quinterly makes the stop at the five. A little discouraging because the Spartans defense playing well up until this point. In the second half, the Bulldogs have moved down the field twice on the Spartans. As again, it's Morris and Morris is hitting the backfield. Speller there makes the stop and a loss of three at the seven yard line. The Speller having a good second half as he has two huge tackles. One this time uh, behind the line of scrimmage. Every Norfolk State. Again, it's been Fields looking for Burroughs here with 150 left. And the Spartans will double Burroughs here. Uh, the end zone. Morris in the backfield. We're going to have a false start as well. And this one's going to go against. False start. Offense number 73. Five yard penalty. Alex Taylor, the right tackle. So the ball's about it now outside the 10 at the 12 yard line with a second down and goal for the Bulldogs with 137 left to go here in the third quarter. Look, Taylor, 6'9, 310, Ross. A lot of young men there. Yes, sir. Uh, red shirt senior. Right tackle. With the penalty as Fields. Catch it. Rolling right now. Looking for barrels and throws underneath. And the pass is going to be caught at the eight yard line. And Savage will make the stop as the pass was completed to Thomas. And Thomas picks up around. Four yards underneath, and that will bring up a third down and goal from the seven-yard line for the Bulldogs. You see, they were double-teaming double Burroughs in the end zone. So they had to go to the safe bet and go down to the up receiver. Burroughs out. Two wide receivers to the near side as Nick comes in motion, and it's going to be a jet sweep to Nick. Nick runs right side, and he lowers his way into the end zone for the score. And we're going to have a flag on the play. And we're going to bring that one back. As Tavian Blackwell said he was held. Offense, number 84. 10-yard penalty. We play third down. And it was a wide receiver on the play. Rodriguez Thomas, the guilty party. So the ball will be backed up to the 15-yard line where it will be third down and goal. That's a huge penalty, Ross, to put them back at the 15. It takes a touchdown off the board. As Burroughs will check back in. And he'll line up in the slot to the near side. It's Fields. Will drop back to pass. Pressure coming pass is going to be thrown too high in the direction of Burroughs. And Spartans had three people in that area. <laughs> With 30 seconds to go, and we'll see the field goal unit coming out to try to make it a seven-point ball game. And hey, whatever works to eliminate Burroughs' opportunities to uh, make some plays is triple team on Burroughs in the end zone that time. So from the right hash, we'll see a 33-yard field goal attempt from Bredesen. The snap is down. The kick is up. It's away, and it is no good. Bredesen misses it right right and the Spartans defensively come up and get uh, a stop here now trailing 14 to 10 with 25 seconds to go here in the third quarter Just talking about how they how this Bulldogs went down the field on the Spartans but the bend don't break defensive mentality comes to play here as the Spartans don't allow any points as the Bulldogs got into the red zone It's a good stand by the Spartans defense. There's Jordan and the offensive line back out onto the field to protect Thomas as we'll see Gerald Hewlett, who just scored the touchdown, back onto the field in the backfield. And Hewlett will get the handoff, same play that he scored the touchdown on, runs left side, stays on his feet. Picks up around eight or nine on the play as he gets out to the 28-yard line. And the Spartans will have a second down and one as the third quarter comes to a close. 14-10 to 10 is your score. 
Norfolk State trailing by four here as the third quarter comes to an end. We'll take a timeout and come back with the start of the fourth. It's a four-point ball game in favor of South Carolina State. We'll take a break as you're watching MEAC football on the MEAC Digital Network. Machine. We're back at Dick Price Stadium. It's a close one here between the Bulldogs of South Carolina State and Norfolk State. It's a 14-10 lead for the Bulldogs as the Spartans come back with the second down. And two as Gerald Hewlett looked like he might have gotten enough of the first down, and they will give him credit to the 31-yard line. It'll be a first down for the Spartans there. Ross Hewlett looks fresh out here today. Picking up speed as he goes around the corner and picks up the first down for the Spartans. 11 carries for him, nearing 50 yards on the day. Spartans have rushed for over 160 here this afternoon. As Thomas will have three wide receivers to the near side as he hands it off again to Hewlett, using that left side, and a big run by Hewlett as he lowers his shoulders after he picks up seven, maybe eight out to the 40. Jalen Powell and Kirby on that left side, Ross. He's just following those two, two guys on the offensive line. Picking up yardage. And Hewlett, again, pacing the Spartans here this afternoon out of the backfield. Now 58 yards rushing for Hewlett. He's second in rushing today to only DeAndre Thomas, who has 11 carries for 80 yards. Reigns still coming down on the second down and one. Smith in the backfield, and it's going to be a quarterback keeper by Thomas. And if, as a flag flies, I believe. As the balls will be spotted at the 41, it will be offsides against South Carolina State, so the Spartans will have the first down. And Troy Singleton will tell you. Offsides. Defense, number 86. Five-yard penalty. Replay second down. Thank you, Mr. Singleton, as Dominguez Wilson was the guilty party. The penalty results in the first down. As the Spartans will have a first at the 45-yard line. And again, it's been a steady dose of running the football. You know what's coming. Yep. And the, the five up front for the Spartans who struggled a little bit in the first half. They played well here in the third and fourth quarters, especially on the ground. As the handoff will go to Raekwon Smith, trying to left side. He cuts back towards the middle. Picks up two on the play before he stopped up. And on the stop is Roderick Perry for the Bulldogs. As Gerald Hewlett will check back in. And again, we won't see much of Hewlett in the next couple of years, but you will see a lot of Johnson and Raekwon Smith, the two freshmen standing side by side on the sideline will be the bell cows for the next three years for the Spartans with 12.40 left. Norfolk State with the second down and eight. As Thomas will send two wide outs in the formation, one split to either side. As again, it's a carry. This is Gerald Hewlett. He's trying to bounce it outside, stays on his feet as he gets near midfield, jumps into South Carolina State territory as he was taken down by Jalen Evans. And we have a couple of Spartans slow to get up. Justin Red will get up, though, as the Spartans now will have a third down and four. Again, you saw Hewlett with his ability to uh, make people miss as he made a couple cuts and got some yardage out of that. Looked like m not much he was going to get when he first got the ball. A third down and four. All runs to this point for Norfolk State on this drive. Hewlett stays in the backfield as South Carolina State will crowd the line of scrimmage. Thomas awaits the snap, hands it off to Hewlett. A lot of pressure in the backfield. Hewlett picks up one yard on the play, but not much more than that. And we'll see what the Spartans decide to do. It'll be a th fourth down now for Norfolk State. They give him credit back to the original line of scrimmage. And that's it. And they will keep the deep offense on the field. It's a lot of faith in your defense there. As the Spartans will have a fourth down and four. The yard line to gain is the 45-yard line of South Carolina State. 
Thomas waits a snap. Will pitch it out to Smith. Smith has to turn it up, and he gets slammed forward for the first down. Oh, man, gutsy play call. You, you said confidence in the defense, confidence in the offensive line as well, Ross. As the offensive line gets that push and gets that first down from Smith. And he got hit before the 45 and did a good job of keeping his feet moving towards the first down marker. Nice job there as well by the wide receivers, wide receivers Marky Ellington and Tylen McElhaney who are blocking out on the edge. As the Spartans have a first down and 10 from the South Carolina State 44-yard line trailing by four. The handoff goes to, actually, it's a play action. The pass is going to be incomplete. Looking for Justin Smith. A play action, and Smith had a step on his man. But the coverage was tight. Coming back by Durant. That was a nice play action there because I didn't know that <laughs> Thomas still had the football. Great play action. Just uh, Justin Smith wasn't able to break separation from uh, his defender. And that was the first pass on this drive with 10-19 left to go. In the fourth quarter, the Spartans trail by four, 14 to 10. Rain still uh, falling here at Dick Price Stadium. As it looks like another Bulldog might be offside. He is. The handoff will go to Raekwon Smith running left side. Smith with a head full of steam picks up three yards. And we're going to have a flag thrown late. But it was thrown backwards. I think it was thrown in the direction maybe of James, maybe. Maybe a late hit. It was thrown in the backfield at the 40, and the officials are heading the wrong direction. After the play, personal foul. Offense, Offense, number 15, 15 yards from the end of the play. The down count, third down. That, that's what makes it worse is yeah. the down count. It happened after the play. And the Spartans now have a long way to go. Here's the ball spotted on the 45-yard line of Norfolk State. The yard line again is the 34 of South Carolina State. And James will stay in, lined up in the slot to the near side. And South Carolina State still expecting the Spartans to run here. They still crowd the line of scrimmage. And they show blitz as Thomas drops back to pass. Rolls right. Looking downfield. And he steps out of bounds. And Coach Scott looking for a penalty. But won't get it. And... That'll bring up a fourth down situation. And the punting unit will come out for Norfolk State. Again, good coverage. Almost like a coverage sack for the Bulldogs as Thomas had nowhere to go down the field. As the Bulldogs will punt. Late getting people on and off. Three. As Richter will get this punt away. It'll be high. And it will bounce. And it will hit a Spartan and then be picked up. Yeah. As we're going to have a flag thrown in the middle of the field. As well at the 47-yard line. So we'll have to sort all of these things out with 9.02 left to go in the fourth quarter. I don't think South Carolina State had enough on the field. As we await for Antroy Singleton and the officials to sort this one out. During the kick, hold, return team, from 26. We'll have to dip it from the end of the kick, first down. So it'll be a penalty against the Bulldogs. The ball was spotted at the eight-yard line where the end of the kick was, and they will move it half the distance to the goal. So after the... Timeout, we believe. At the timeout, we'll see where the ball will be spotted. It will be spotted inside the five at the four-yard line when we come back from this timeout. 9.02 left to go here in the fourth quarter. South Carolina State leading Norfolk State by four on the MEAC Digital Network. Timeless machine.
902 left to go here in quarter number four as the Bulldogs penalty will back them up inside the five. They lead 14 and 10 over Norfolk State. As Fields in the shotgun in the backfield, he'll hand it off to Morse. He tries the left side. He stood up at the line of scrimmage. Tavian Blackwell, the first person there. Also, Deshaun Dixon. So, so important here, Ross, for the Spartans to get a stop. They'll have good field position if they can just force a three and out here. We'll have a second down and 10 now for the Bulldogs. Morris will stay in the backfield. As the Spartans will crowd the line of scrimmage. Let's see if Fields, who's had a nice connection with Burroughs here in the second half, We'll look for Burroughs. He's in the slot now to the near side of the field. It will be a handoff to Morris. He'll try the right side. And gets hit in the backfield and drags tacklers out past the five to the seven, maybe the eight. And we're going to have a stoppage of play if someone lost their helmet. That was Brandon Tucker. He'll have to come to the sideline. And so we'll have a third down and... Five for the Bulldogs. Nice job of keeping his feet moving there by Morris. Picked up some extra yards because of that. Now you have to watch Burroughs in the slot. That's Fields. Hard snap count. 7.50 left to go here in the fourth. We'll have a stoppage of play. We're going to have a, a penalty flag thrown, but it will be a timeout taken. Before the delay of game, as the the flag was thrown, but I delay, time out, South Carolina State media. It will be a media timeout as the clock stopped with 7:42. As the, after the timeout by South Carolina State, they lead by four, 14 to 10, right here on the MIAC. world's never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine as we're back to live action here with 742 left to go in the fourth quarter as we take this other timeout a technical timeout as the officials ask for more change we'll send it back and be right back after this break right here on the MIAC digital network never gotten enough of it so we proudly bring you more of it the new 911 timeless machine third down and six is a return to action as fields lines up in the shotgun two wide receivers with the either side fields looks in the direction of burrows and he can't connect with them out of the slot we're going to have a stoppage of play as well to bring up a fourth down and the North Carolina AT is today. They came out and enjoyed a 54 nothing win over North Carolina Central. They shut out back to back mm -hmm. weeks with 731 left to go here in the fourth quarter. South Carolina State will be punting from their own end zone, leading by four. As the punt is away and it's high, and Justin Smith will call a fair catch at the 41 yard line, so the Spartans will have good field position. Scores from around the conference 7 7, Florida AM and and Bethune Cookman in the Florida Classic. As Bethune Cookman got on the board first, and Florida AM responded. 35 0, St. Francis over Delaware State. And Howard, with three seconds left in that one. Leading Morgan State 20 to 15. We'll see if that's going final here in a few seconds as the Spartans come back out. Great field position at the South Carolina State 41 yard line. 726 left to go. Rain pouring here now in Norfolk. As the handoff will go to Hewlett running right side. He loses the football. Norfolk State comes up with it. As Right there on the spot is the freshman, Demontre Smith, offensive lineman. Redshirt freshman, 
there to clean up the mess. Johnny on the spot that time is Hewlett. Let the ball slip out of his hands again, Ross. With the rain coming down harder, it just means you have to protect the ball a little more. When you go through those holes, it's the defenders are going to try to rip the ball out of your hands. Raekwon Smith now in that tailback as the Spartans have two wide receivers, one split to either side as Rabbit will get the handoff running left side. He cuts back, and he's going to get taken down for a loss of five on the play, or four. Back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a third down and ten. I haven't seen Johnson that much in this second half. They've been going with Smith and Hewlett. That time Smith couldn't get out on the edge as the DN shut, she, uh, shut off the block and got the tackle. Loss of two there to the 39-yard line will be a third down and eight. As Thomas will send two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Smith stays in the backfield. Six minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. The Spartans trail by four as Smith. Thomas, waiting in the backfield, escapes one tackle, ducks through another one, stays on his feet, and he gets taken forward for a ride pickup of two there on the play. He did a heck of a job just to get those two. That'll bring up a fourth down situation again, a fourth down and six. Again, Thomas relying on his legs that time, had no choice. Again, the exotic blitzes from South Carolina State forced him to leave the pocket had to make something out of nothing. He got two yards out of it. Thomas. Have a fourth down. The Spartans one of one today with 10 seconds on the play clock. Thomas will send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. Thomas awaits the snap. Gets it off in time. Pressure coming. Steps up in the pocket. Avoids one tackle. Stays on his feet. Flips it off to Smith, who can't hang on to it. Nothing else you can do more there for DeAndre Thomas. First down. As he shuffled it off to Smith, there will be a turnover on downs for the Spartans with 5.06 left to go, and South Carolina State will have it at their own 37-yard line. What a play there by DeAndre Thomas. Thomas looked like he was going to get tackled instinctively. Pitch it off to Smith. Smith could not hold on to it. Would have been a first down and more. And you have to credit DeAndre Thomas. He's made yeah. some good throws here today with 5.06 left. The Spartans still with all three of their timeouts as Fields comes back onto the field. Morris in the backfield. As Morris will get the handoff running left side. And right there to catch him is Karan Speller. As Nigel Chavis cleans him up. Nice job there by Speller on the tackle for loss of one. Speller's had a good game today. And Howard gets their second win in conference play. And Morgan State at the bottom there, two and six, along with, well, they're not going to be at the bottom, I think, is Delaware State, two and nine. We'll end up at the bottom. Congratulations to Howard. They went 20 to 15 over Morgan State. As seven seconds on the play clock, as Fields will have to hurry it up. They send Morris in motion. As Morris gets the handoff running left side, keeps his feet moving as he crossed the original line of scrimmage out to the 42-yard line. It'll be a third down and five for the Bulldogs with the clock moving with four minutes, five seconds to go here in the fourth. Very interesting season this year, Ross. Morgan beat A&T, and then they lose to Howard. So interesting season so far it's this year in the MEAC. And again... All of the scenarios that the MEAC sent out this week pretty much don't really matter anymore as <laughs> North Carolina A&T handles their business. They're 8-3 and three on the season, and they will be the, the MEAC representative in the Celebration Bowl as Nick moves into the backfield. It's going to be a quarterback keeper as he probes the line of scrimmage, and he gets taken down. Tavian Blackwell there, and he'll bring up fourth down for South Carolina State. Defense just came to play today, Ross. That time, a huge third down stop. They'll get the ball back here with about three minutes left in the ball game to try to get the win. And all three of their timeouts remaining. As the Spartans. We'll have it and they'll have it with under three minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. 
Cliff Benjamin to punt. He gets the snap, gets it away, and it will be out of bounds inside the 30 at the 26-yard line as the Spartans sent the house to Benjamin. He did a good job of getting that away. And the Spartans will have two 44 three timeouts here to try to win the ball game. They need six. They need six for sure, Ross. And you know that South Carolina State is going to bring the blitz. So Thomas is going to have to recognize the blitz and make some smart decisions in this last 244. And with the conditions of the field, I know it's hard to sort of throw the football, but again, the Spartans are going to have to do a good job of bringing them in. They've had a few drops here this afternoon, including a one on fourth down by Smith as the Spartans. Again, you have to credit the defense of South Carolina State, especially in the secondary. They played well as Thomas will empty the backfield. As the blitz comes, Thomas looks over the middle pass. is going to be in and out of the hands of D.K. James. And again, another catchable football there for the Spartans. Just a little bit low. But again, these are the times where you have to help your quarterback out with 241 left to go here in the fourth quarter. Absolutely. Another catchable ball and another blitz by South Carolina State. So you definitely have to help your quarterback. If you know the blitz is coming, you have to come, up, uh, come to him and try to make it easier for uh, those complete passes. Second down and 10 as James comes in motion. We'll see another blitz here from South Carolina State. And now they back out of it as the pass is going to be complete out of the backfield, incomplete uh, again. Raquan Smith had it in his hand on the wheel route there and couldn't bring it in. Again, the weather, not making any excuses, could be a factor as well as a lot of these passes are in the hands and just slipping right out of them. And Norfolk State with all three timeouts remaining, which is good if they have to punt, if they can't get the first down. Still have an opportunity if they can get a stop, if they don't get the first down here on this third down and 10. Thomas in the shotgun. Thomas with one deep safety for the Bulldogs. Drops back to pass, looking downfield, looking for McElhaney and throws the ball out of bounds. Thomas was hit as he threw. And we'll see a fourth down situation. Again, Ross, another blitz putting pressure. And looks like the Spartans are going to punt. I think it's the right decision with a uh, full complement of timeouts. A full complement of timeouts here. Got what you wanted. The blitz look from South Carolina State. And we're going to have a stoppage of play. And a timeout taken by South Carolina State. 30 second timeout. Timeout. South Carolina State. First charge timeout. 30 seconds. And again, 232 yards passing today for South Carolina State. South Carolina State second timeout. They have one remaining. They have two rushing touchdowns today, both by Morris, and they both were one yard runs. Set up by passes to Burroughs, who now on the year is up to 918 yards receiving to go along with 13 touchdowns. Yeah, Burroughs has been their main target on the offensive side. Again, mostly in the slot where he has a safety or a linebacker on him. He's able to get in that zone, and he's been able to get open for his quarterback. Richter will stand at his own 11. High snap. He brings it in. He'll get it away, and this one will be low, and he'll take a Norfolk State bounce, and... Bounce inside the 35 to the 32-yard line where the clock will stop. 2.23 left to go here in the fourth quarter. And again, the Spartans with all three timeouts remaining. And uh, we're glad Richter 6-1, Ross, because that was a high snap. He had to go get it. Almost over his head, he got the snap and got a decent punt off. And again, we'll see the South Carolina State offense. As they're looking for one first down, the Spartans are looking for a three and out here. They got one on their last drive. They will call their, use their three timeouts. Hopefully, they might be able to get a turnover as Morse in the backfield. And he'll keep it going left side, still on his feet, spins. Taken down out past the 35-yard line, and Spartans will call their first timeout. 
as Morris was tackled by Nigel Chavis after a pickup of four. Timeout, Norfolk State, first charge team timeout. 2.16 left to go in the fourth quarter. Again, like you said, the Bulldogs are looking for that first down and the Spartans are looking for a stop. So this is this is what it comes down to on senior day, last game of the season. Ross, 14 to 10 in the fourth quarter. Two minutes left. And a quick timeout. And the Spartans defensively will be asked to make one more stop here. As it's a second down now and six after the pickup of four by Morse, who has 77 yards tonight, rushing with two touchdowns on 22 carries. As Fields hustles back onto the field, he has eight seconds on the play clock. Morse back there, four seconds on the play clock. Let's see if they get it off in time. They do. It's going to be a quarterback keeper for Fields, and he runs right side, gets to the 40-yard line, a pickup of three, where it'll be a third down and three. As second the Spartans take their charge, out. second charge timeout with 2.11 left to go here in the fourth quarter. So come down to this. Spartan defense has been on the play, on the field now for two, 64 plays. They've given up 289 yards. Check that it was Tyrese Nick there who ran for three yards. He has six carries today for negative two yards on the afternoon. Well, you know, Ross, the South Carolina State averaging 31 points a game, so the defense has played, played well today. You know, a couple breakdowns on a few plays, but other than that, the defense has been solid for the Spartans. And the Spartans will crowd the box. As it's Tyrese Nick at the quarterback spot. As he'll keep it. Rush outside. And he gets hit in the backfield. And the ball is loose. It's loose. And it looks like Norfolk State has it as Nigel Chavis stripped the ball away. And it looked like it was immediate recovery. Nigel Chavis had it. And it looked like the Spartans were there as well. And Norfolk State comes up with the football. You can review it if you would like. But it should be Norfolk State football. No signal yet. As that was a... Immediate recovery. We'll see what the call is. And then the late penalty as well. There's no foul on the play. The ruling on the field. Forward progress will stop at the 37-yard line. Fourth down. The Spartans have to call a timeout. As the clock should steep, keep moving, and I believe. And final timeout, Norfolk State, 30 seconds. And again, it'll be a fourth down for the Bulldogs, and we'll see if the booth will review it. Again, but like you said, Ross, the forward progress. It's, it's, it's tough to uh, dissect because you never know when. It's not very tough if you blow the whistle. <laughs> That's very true, but I didn't hear a whistle, so I'm not sure what they, where they saw that, but they, that's what they called, so we have to get this punt and try to make something happen with it. And the whistle wasn't blown. That's the tough thing. Yeah. The yeah. whistle wasn't blown, and Nick wasn't down. And the Spartans recovered, so <laughs> tough break that time for the Spartans. As the Bulldogs will punt. Four down and six. It's a high snap. But it's got, and it's out of bounds. So the Spartans should have great field position either way. As it will be in South Carolina State territory with 2.01 left to go. He'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. And it looked like it might have gone out a little bit. Sooner, but the Spartans will have good field position here in Norfolk State with no timeouts. 2:01 to go. We'll have to move quickly. 
here with the red with the sophomore at quarterback. It'll be a handoff to Hewlett. Hewlett avoids one tackle, gets out of bounds, gets taken down out of bounds after a pickup of about three on the play. Inside the 45 to the 44 yard line, where it'll be second down and seven. Just amazing for Hewlett even to get to get out of bounds. He has to jump and hurdle over a few defenders. Good play by him. Thomas, the quarterback for Norfolk State, three wide receivers to the far side. The tight end to the near side of the field. Blitz being shown by South Carolina State as a quarterback will play action, rolls right, looking for room to run, gets to the 40-yard line before he's brought down to the 39. And the Spartans will quickly get back to the line of scrimmage. 144 left. It's a third down and three. Three wide receivers to the top of the formation, one to the near. Thomas will hand it off to Raekwon Smith. Smith still on his feet, picks up the first down and more. Still on his feet as he gets taken down inside the 25. And we're going to have a flag thrown as well as it looks like either a face mask or a whole good job there by Raekwon Smith, the freshman. <laughs> and it will be a face mask against South Carolina State. Smith gets to the 22 and it will be half the distance to the goal with 124 left. We talked about being resilient as the Spartans would have been. That's been their motto all year. What a play by Smith as he stayed on his feet, broke through some tackles, and is going to get some extra yardage tacked on it as well. Personal foul, face mask, defense. Half the distance be added to the end of the run. First down. Rabbit with his best carry of the day. And the Spartans will have it first down and 10 from the 13-yard line with 124 left to go. And the Spartans will have to still keep in mind the clock as South Carolina State will load the box. As it's a quarterback keeper by DeAndre Thomas. Thomas breaks it outside, stays on his feet, inside the 10, down to the 7. And the Spartans, with 116 left, have a second down and 5 after the pickup of 5. Thomas quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Thomas awaits the snap, hands it off to Hewlett. He tries the left side, gets inside the five, and he'll sneak into the end zone for the touchdown. 58 seconds to go. Norfolk State takes their first lead of the ball game. What a play by Hewlett. Again, he's had a great game. That time hit off of a tackle. No wrap up, and he stretches in and gets the touchdown for the Spartans. And the Spartans... Will attempt the extra point to go up by three. What a drive. All on the ground. There by the Spartans. Raekwon Smith with a big run. With 58 seconds to go, the Spartans take their first lead at 16 to 14. Snap is down. The kick is up. It's high enough. It's long enough. It is up and it's through. What a drive by the Spartans. With 58 seconds to go, Norfolk State takes their first lead of the ball game, 17-14 on Gerald Hewitt's second touchdown of the day, his third of the year. And the Spartans now rushing for 226 yards today. Take their first lead of the game against South Carolina State, who now will have it with one timeout remaining, trailing for the first time by three. And, Ross, you said it all runs on that last drive. Of course, tacked on with by the big run from Smith with that penalty to go along with it. So uh, great drive by the Spartans as they take the lead 17 to 14 in the fourth quarter. DeAndre Thomas has 93 yards rushing. Hewlett 77, Smith 24, including that 15 yard run. As the Spartans will kick it away. Again, Gerald Hewlett has both of the touchdowns today for the Spartans. An 8-yard touchdown and a 15-yard touchdown run as Nardone will get this one away and it's going to be squibbed over the middle of the field and it'll be taken by an up man. And getting out to the 42-yard line for the Bulldogs is Omar Cummings. So solid field position. With no wind here today, and South Carolina State has already missed the field goal. They'll have the football with 54 seconds to go. 
at their own 41. Yard line trailing by three, needing a field goal to tie six would give them the lead. Good field position. Just have to make sure there are no breakdowns in that back end for the Spartans defense. As Fields has Morris in the backfield. Three wide receivers to the near side. As Fields drops back to pass. Stunt coming. Looking over the middle of the field. Pass is going to be complete into the hands of Burroughs. And he's into Norfolk State territory already. With 50 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. And Burroughs is down. Again, Ross, they found him in the slot. Burroughs. And he got into that area. An open area. And made a great catch as he was hit going down. And again, just ran right up the scene there. Timeout on the field. Offensive injury. There's no option for a 10-second runoff. Clock stop for the first down. 20-yard pickup there for Burroughs, who's averaging around 20 yards of reception here today. He'll have six receptions for 130 yards. And again... The clock will stop on first downs, incompletions, and one timeout for South Carolina State. The Spartans without one. As Burles will get up under his own power and walk to the sideline. And we'll see how long he's out because that's obviously South Carolina State's top target on offense. As the ball will be spotted at the Norfolk State 39-yard line after the 20-yard pickup there from Fields to Burroughs. Four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side. Fields with Morris in the backfield. Fields drops back to pass. Pressure coming, steps up. It's going to be complete over the middle to Morris. Morris spins out of a tackle inside the 30, and it looks like he might get credit to the first down to the 29. 36 seconds to go. As Fields drops back the pass again. Pass going to be complete again to Fields as he runs towards the sideline. And he's out of bounds inside the 25 to the 21. Morris out of the backfield. Has the last two receptions. It'll be a second down. For the Bulldogs as the ball is resting on the 21 with 26 seconds to go. Fields with three wide right receivers to the near side drops back to pass again. Looking out again, it's Fields out of the Morris out of the backfield into the 16-yard line with 21 seconds to go. And South Carolina State is doing a good job with their two-minute drill as the ball spotted and the clock moving with 15 seconds. Fields drops back to pass with time looking, steps up, and he's going to take off and get taken down inside the 15 with six seconds to go. And the timeout's going to be taken by South Carolina State. Third, final timeout, South Carolina State, 30 seconds. It's a 30-second timeout. So if you're South Carolina State, do you run one play towards the end zone? And take the risk of staying in bounds and keeping the clock rolling. Or do you throw towards the sidelines? They try to get close to the ball spotted. It looks like at the 12 yard line from here, it'll be a 20, 28 yard, 29 yard attempt. Tough decision. I, I, I say go for the field goal and field goal and I think that might that might be what they're going to do and what you don't want to do is take too much time on the sideline here with 15 seconds left Burles will be on the field as they'll bring the field goal unit onto the field quickly you might as well take the penalty here's a late snap the kick is on the way it's up it's long enough it's up and it's through And it ties the ball game with two seconds to go. Bulldogs had to actually rush to get that off. Didn't look like they were going to have time, but field goal goes through for the Bulldogs, and they tie this one up. 
as it looked like it was a 20 four yard attempt a 34 yard attempt maybe uh, excuse me 20 nine yard attempt and we'll see the kickoff unit come out a touchdown by the spartans gave them a lead with 56 seconds ago and a nice drive including a 20 yard uh, reception for burrows down the scene to get the tie as we'll see bredesen come out to kick off green and talbert back deep for the spartans to return bredesen will get it away and again it's short and it will be squibbed and will be picked up by green time will be expired as green bounces it outside to the sideline and that's the way we'll go into overtime that is the end of regulation overtime here at dick price stadium as the Spartans and Bulldogs didn't like four quarters. <laughs> How about opportunities to score here on both ends? The ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. The ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line. Rain coming down. The Spartans just scored on the ground. And they've rushed again for 226 yards. as the officials meet at midfield and uh, an amazing ball game here today south carolina state had a 14 to 3 lead the spartans scored the next 14 and then with six seconds to go a field goal to tie it by bredesen as the Spartans and Bulldogs will play some extra football. And how this normally works is whoever gets the coin flip will, wins the coin flip, will ask to receive this ball second so they can see what the first team does and match or, or win it. As Bobby Price and Nigel Chavis will be your captains for Norfolk State, for South Carolina State, Cliff Benjamin. Check that Lane Jones. As well as Bruce Johnson will be your captains. As we'll listen to Antroy Singleton. thought we would <laughs> and Troy looking for the coin normally with the rain coming down we'll blame it on the rain <laughs> as the Spartans win the toss and The Bulldogs will be on offense first. And Troy Singleton decided, was going to say what he wanted to say, but then decided, <laughs> and forget it. So the ball will be spotted at the 25-yard line for South Carolina State as we move from right to left. And the Spartans defensively gave some cushion on the last drive, and Corey Fields matriculated the ball down the field nicely there. 19 of 32 today for Fields for 274 yards. No scores. He's been sacked four times. As Morris come out. Burroughs will line up in the slot to the far side. As Fields awaits the snap. He'll hand it off to Morris in between the tackles. Spins off one tackle. Gets hit. As Speller hit him first, then he was cleaned up nicely by Nigel Chavis. Speller again having a great game today. That time forced the running back to go inside, and Chavis did the rest. Ten tackles now for Nigel Chavis. As South Carolina State will send three wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. And that one is Shaquan Davis, who's been quiet here since the start of the game 
And Davis will get the reception and pick up the first down. Coles in coverage. Ball will be spotted now at the 13-yard line for South Carolina State. At yeah, that time, Cole was in coverage. Coles was in coverage. Great coverage, but better route. It was an out route. Receiver got open and got the first down. As again, we'll see Fields in the shotgun. First down and 10. Ball spotted at the 13-yard line. Fields will hand it to Morris. Morris bounces it outside. Stays on his feet as he's taken down. See if his Harden had a chance at him. But he was cleaned up again by Nigel Chavis. Yeah, Morris just eluding tacklers, slipping Morris through that. Through the rain, hard to bring down. Give him credit of three there. It'll be a second down and seven. As Fields in the shotgun. Two wide receivers to the near side. One to the far, that's Davis. As it's going to be a pass into the end zone as the ball's going to be tipped by Coles as they were looking for Davis again. Coles almost had an interception as well. Good play by him. Good solid defense. Tight coverage as he knocks it down. A third down and seven for South Carolina State. As Burles will line up in the slot to the far side, have to be aware of where he is. Four wideouts in the formation, two split to either side. Morris out of the backfield as Fields drops back the pass. Pass is going to be nearly intercepted by Bobby Price. He had his hands on it, and that'll bring up fourth down, and we'll see the field goal unit come out for South Carolina State. Price turned around, saw the ball right in his face. Hands went up just a little too late to bring it in. It's the second pass breakup of the day for Bobby Price. And from the middle of the field, we'll see Bredesen drive from 26. Actually, the right side, the right hash for Bredesen. He just hit one to send us into overtime. Low snap. The kick is up, and this one's line drive, and it's up and through. As it snuck over the crossbar, and the Spartans need three here to keep this game moving. Very low kick. Just gets over the crossbar there, Ross. It was a low snap, and Austin Kemp, the holder, did a great job of putting that one on the ground, and the Spartans will have the football. Now trailing by 320-17. We well, talked about the overtime rules. Now you know what you need to either tie or take or get the win here as the Spartans know they need at least a field goal to, to go to double overtime. Gerald Hewlett in the backfield here. As the Spartans have a first down and 10 from the 25-yard line. Hewlett will stay in the backfield. Thomas, the quarterback, he sends D.K. James in motion. Thomas awaits the snap, hands it off to Hewlett. He tries for the sideline, gets hit in the backfield, and he's driven backwards after a loss of two. It's been basically the same play that Hewlett's been running all day. Might have to try to take a shot down the field and try to open it up a little bit on this overtime. Ball, ball spotted at the 26-yard line, a loss of one. As Thomas will stay in with Hewlett in the backfield. Smith lined up to the far side of the field. James lined up in the slot to the near side with Ellington. South Carolina State showing blitz now back up. As again, it's a handoff to Hewlett. He tries the left side again. Hewlett picks up nice yardage inside the... 25 down to the 22 yard line. A pickup of about five on play. It'll be third down and six. Again, you're in field goal range. You don't want to try anything, you know, I guess out of the ordinary, but you want to make it safe. But maybe a, try, maybe a shot down the field wouldn't hurt here. Third down for Thomas. Here with two wide receivers to the near side, one to the far. South Carolina State expecting run here, crowding the line of scrimmage. As D.K. James makes moves in motion. As Again, it's a handoff to Hewlett. He tries the same side. Hewlett bounces inside, won't get the first down inside the 20-yard line. And will bring out the field goal unit. Yeah, 
one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, Ross. That's Smith on the outside and James in the slot. But they go with the run and they come up a little short. And from 35 yards out in the left hash, we'll see Josh Nardone coming out to attempt to tie the ball game out of the hold of Stuart Anderson. The snap is down and the kick is up. It's blocked. It was blocked up the middle and South Carolina State will win it. Twenty to seventeen is your final score. Norfolk State will fall here at Dick Price Stadium, and again, what a ball game the Spartans did. Uh, the Yeomans worked to get back in the ball game, and we'll move on now to the post game show. Twenty to seventeen is your score. Your final score: South Carolina State with two field goals down the stretch to win it, and again, a great season for South Carolina State. They'll end up eight and three as well and they have an opportunity at the fcs playoffs here but again a great ball game between two top flight teams in the conference absolutely uh you know with this for the spartans they fought to the end very resilient uh group just uh couldn't get over the edge here at the at the extra uh, the extra time but a uh, great game and a great season for the uh, south carolina state bulldogs south carolina state will improve to eight and three the spartans will fall to five and seven overall here today in Wu Bay. Uh, great game here at Dick Price Stadium. Both teams fought hard, but it's South Carolina State who will come away with the victory here today, and they will uh, lock up second place in the conference here this afternoon as uh, North Carolina a and Actually, they will have the share of the championship here today with the, with the loss. Both they and a and have two losses, so congratulations to South Carolina State as they are uh, the 2019 MEAC co-champions with North Carolina A&T. A&T will be going to the Celebration Bowl. So for Wu Baker Bray, I'm Ross Gordon. Saying so long from Dick Price Stadium, where the final score is South Carolina State 20, Norfolk State 17. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. We've gotten enough of it. So we proudly bring you more of it. The new 911, timeless machine.